Hello and welcome fieldside at Warrior Stadium, the home of the 2024 Boys and Girls Pinnacle Cup Championships. It is championship time from Warrior Stadium as the Whirlin Lady Warriors look to add a piece of hardware to the trophy cases. They face the Buffalo Lady Bison and we have all the action here on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. <clears throat> this is the McGarvin and Taylor pregame show. Presented by McGarvin and Taylor Real Estate in Worland. This and every broadcast will not be possible without the wonderful support of this community and the following businesses. Pinnacle Bank, Northern Wyoming News, McGarvin and Taylor Real Estate, Hasco Industrial Supply, Admiral Beverage, King's Carpet One, Sally's Classic Pizza, Swing Trucking, McGarvin Moberly Construction, Diesel Pickup Specialists, Bighorn Federal Savings Bank, Bryant Honey, Jay's Detail, Sage Creek Land and Cattle, and Stellar Roofing and Construction. Championship soccer action is just around the corner here from Worland High School. Will the Lady Warriors continue to ride the momentum and bounce the bison and lift the championship trophy here in the 2024 Pinnacle Cup? Or will Buffalo ride their penalty shootout victory into a surprise championship here in the 2024 edition of the Pinnacle Cup at Warrior Stadium? Find out next on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. Construction in Worland offers roofing services, home renovation, and new home construction. Free estimates, plus they handle all insurance claims for a stress-free, streamlined process. Asphalt shingles, rubber roofs, TPO, and metal roofing. Bids for commercial or residential. Housing remodels, new construction, sidings, windows, concrete, and more. Stellar Roofing and Construction has the expertise and experience to get it done right. Stellar Roofing and Construction, 347-3289, or stop in at 1115 Bighorn Avenue in Worland. In its 24 years in Worland, King's Carpet One has become a trusted destination for homeowners and a valued member of the community. Discover our exciting new showroom, Room by Room, designed to elevate your shopping experience. A family-owned business that's also a good neighbor, King's Carpet One supports many charities in Worland and throughout the Bighorn Basin. King's Carpet One, giving our best to our customers and our community. Sally's Classic Pizza in Worland, the classiest pizza around. Sally's offers pizza made with fresh dough daily. Go with a classic single topping or load it up with the king. Ten toppings in all. Friday, football and pizza is a winning combination. The Warrior Special is available all school year. Get a large two-topping pizza and a two-liter for just $16.98. Fridays only. Sally's Classic Pizza, 1214 Bighorn Avenue or call 347-2453. Swing Trucking is a family-owned and operated company in Whirlin, Wyoming, offering trucking services for a host of industries. They have done extensive work in Wyoming, Montana, North Dakota, and Colorado, as well as surrounding Rocky Mountain states for the past 70 years. Their modern and up-to-date equipment allows them to provide full-service solutions for their customers' needs, from start to completion. Swing Trucking, 347-4161. Swing Trucking is a proud supporter of McKamey Broadcasting and Whirlin High School Athletics. I was a little bit smaller, a mini shack baller. I wouldn't have to yell when I talk to a toddler. I wish I had more leg room on a plane or a train. Life is tough when you're taller. Yeah, I shop it big and tall. But when it comes to my Pepsi, I like to keep it nice and small. A soft drink for your pocket. So light and refreshing, one sip, don't knock it. So the next time you have to check out line, grab some Pepsi minis, but get your own. Because these are all mine, mine, mine. Welcome back inside the McGarvin and Taylor pregame show. Jordan McKamey with you. Joined now by Whirling Lady Warrior head to coach Jesus Davila. Coach coming off a semifinal victory against Green River. Now you go into the championship game against the Lady Bison of Buffalo High School. Talk to me about the challenges of such a quick turnaround. 
Yeah, it's early in the season. You know, we've made it a priority of ours to be uh, the most conditioned team in the state, you know, but we're still early in the season. So going back to back, you know, we're looking at one hour games, you know, you spend a lot of a lot of energy. But at the end of the day, the girls know, you know, when it's games like this, there's no excuse there. You know, you got to go out there and perform. It doesn't matter if you're aching. It doesn't matter if you're hurting. Doesn't matter if you're tired, you just have to go out there and compete. Well, and coach, just going back to the semifinal here before we get into the championship game, 4 1 victory over the Green River Lady Wolves came out very aggressively. Great build up, get three first half goals, win it 4 1. What was your favorite thing coming out of that semifinal? Well, I, I mean, we just, I think we just had a, an overall good game starting from our keeper, you know, to our defense, to the middle of the field, and to, like you mentioned, you know, to putting the balls in the back of the net with the opportunities that we created. Um, you know, I would like to highlight the physicality of that game. I thought we did a good job with that. Um, and then also just the way and the speed at which we moved the ball. I thought that was just very impressive. Um, you know, the girls have been, you know, told it's like you got to make up your mind before the ball comes to you and then choose quickly, right, what you're going to do. And um, they got the ball, kept moving it, and they were poised, they were composed, uh, you know, under pressure. So that's what we worked out all week. And I'm really happy that it all came together in that game. Now, coming to this one, Buffalo Lady Bison come into this one after winning their semifinal. What do you expect to see from this Buffalo squad here in the championship game? Buffalo is always tough. Uh, there was a tough matchup against us last year. Um, you know, they do like to pack the middle of the field. They still have one returning player. She's a sophomore that's very dynamic. So we got to keep an eye on them um, and then, you know, just continue to really play our style of soccer, you know. And um, I, f I feel that at some point those teams have to adapt to what we do, you know, rather than the other way around. But, um, no, I'm excited. I'm excited for the girls. I think they deserve to be in that championship game. Well, Coach, obviously – Saw Allie come into the starting lineup, and then also Rivers Carroll back in in a in a in a capacity, and that seems to have given a little extra juice to this team. Yeah, there's a lot of excitement. Obviously, we've missed uh, Rivers being on the field, and you know we she's been sidelined for the last you know two and a half weeks. But um, you know it's always great to get her out there, and um, you know to get and contribute so that she can contribute you know to to her team. So that was really exciting to see that. Well, Coach, championship atmosphere. We talked a little bit about it before the semifinal game, but how much of an advantage is it for you to get into a championship game that comes with that pressure? It may not yeah. be a state title game, yeah. but this is those ones where the nerves get going, the juice is yes. getting flowing. How much of an advantage is that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, anytime that you have the opportunity to uh, practice, um, the more exposure the girls have to high-intensity games when everything's on the line, you know, it's all part of the buildup, all part of what we're trying to to build here. And, um, I mean, it just can't get any better than that, you know, to have this practice match in a final in a championship game. Um, you know, you just you can't buy that. So, Jordan McKamey joined by Worland Lady Warrior head coach Jesus. Davila. Coach, any final thoughts here before we let you get into the championship preparations? Um, I can't think of anything right now. I'm excited. I, I hope, uh, you know, we, uh, you know, go out there and, and do our job. And, and that's just what it boils down to. So um, that's all. Coach, hope to see you here with some hardware in the post-game show. Head coach Jesus Davila there on the McGarvin and Taylor pregame show. Pinnacle Cup championship action just minutes away on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. Supply is known for their industrial hoses, steel products, and trailers, but they'll surprise you with products for every customer. Check out Lazy One Clothing, matching pajamas, and more. Kill Tech jackets for kids and adults, ready to protect you from old man winter. Stay cozy and stylish with Trail Crest blankets. Stuck? Not a chance with Yankum Kinetic ropes for every size ride. Give Hasco Industrial Supply a call at 347-6158 or stop in at 415 Bighorn Avenue in Worland.
Join the War Party. Thank you to the following War Party members. Jay's Details, 1626 U.S. Highway 20, 347-2071. Bryant Honey, Pure Wyoming Honey and Pollination Services. Sage Creek Land and Cattle Company. Bighorn Federal Savings Bank, 1006 Bighorn Avenue, 347-6196. Want to join the War Party? Call 307-431-1468 or email mckamiebroadcasting at gmail.com. Ladies and gentlemen, are your diesel engines letting you down? Need a fix that's top-notch, fast, and reliable? DPS is your go-to destination. We are fueled by excellence and driven by expertise. From trucks to trailers, no job's too tough for our skilled crew. We've got the latest technology to get your diesel roaring again. Choose DPS where you decide and we provide. Stop in at 1051 North 10th Street in Worland. Call us 347-4410 or visit us on the web at dps307.com. Here in Wyoming, we live by the spirit of the Wild West. Now where the sun's a little brighter, where the snows that fall are a trifle wider, where the bonds of home are a wee bit tighter, that's where the West begins. We're the bank that's with you wherever that spirit leads, because we're more than a bank in Wyoming. We're Wyoming in a bank. Pinnacle Bank, the way banking should be.
McGarvin Moberly Construction, a Worland institution, is celebrating 60 years in business. McGarvin Moberly is a specialized construction company with a focus on highway rehabilitation, maintenance, and reconstruction. For as many years as they've been in business, they've supported Worland High School Athletics, and that tradition continues with the support of McKamey Broadcasting. McGarvin Moberly wishes good luck and success to all Worland Warrior and Lady Warrior teams this season. McGarvin Moberly, 60 years and counting. Go Warriors! Stellar Roofing and Construction in Worland offers roofing services, home renovation, and new home construction. Free estimates, plus they handle all insurance claims for a stress-free, streamlined process. Asphalt shingles, rubber roofs, TPO, and metal roofing. Bids for commercial or residential. Housing remodels, new construction, sidings, windows, concrete, and more. Stellar Roofing and Construction has the expertise and experience to get it done right. Stellar Roofing and Construction, 347-3289, or stop in at 1115 Bighorn Avenue in Worland. In its 24 years in Worland, King's Carpet One has become a trusted destination for homeowners and a valued member of the community. Discover our exciting new showroom, Room by Room, designed to elevate your shopping experience. A family-owned business that's also a good neighbor, King's Carpet One supports many charities in Worland and throughout the Bighorn Basin. King's Carpet One, giving our best to our customers and our community. And welcome back here, field side at Warrior Stadium. I realized that our mic somehow got muted out there, so probably was just uh, talking uh, to myself. So apologies about that. Looking at the uh, starter lineups here, we're going to get into the uh, Lady Warriors here for our Northern Miami News starting lineups. Number 23, Yahida Aguayo. Number 7 is Emma Hunt. 22 is Jasmine Espinosa. Number 10, Nayeli Aguayo. 18, Taylor Simmons. 21, Kira Warren. Number 99, Sam Segetti. Number 11, Maddie Robertson. Number 20 is Katya Navarro. Number 14 is Paige Lundgren. And number 5, is Ali Stamatakos for the Buffalo Lady Bison. They'll start this way. Number one, Tara Bowden. Number five is Hannah Zink. Number six, Mackenzie Bissett. Number seven is Ruthie Mantle. Number 10, Jalen Wright. Number 12 is Emma Duncan. Number 14, Maddie Ludwig. Number 16, Cassidy Bessler. 19 is Sarah Slaw. 23 is Aubrey Irish. And number 26 is Brooke Darnell. Lady Warriors in the away are the home orange today. White numbers. Lady Bison in the away whites. Black numbers. Worland across the Lady Warrior jerseys. Buffalo across the Bison jerseys here. 30 minutes up on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard as we are getting ready for our Northern Wyoming News opening kickoff here on a Saturday afternoon, a beautiful sunny day as a little weather going to be blowing in overnight so we get the last good day of uh, this spring session and we have it for the Pinnacle Cup Championship here. Northern Wyoming News opening kickoff going to be controlled by the Buffalo Lady Bison. Referees getting into position here, and they'll check in with the goalkeepers momentarily. Whistle there, and the Northern Mommy News opening kickoff here to the Buffalo Lady Bison. 29-55 up on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard as the Bison come forward to the outside. Stamatakos doing the defending out there, steps on the ball there, moves it to the inside. Now drops it back off for Lundgren to launch forward into the midfield, and the Lady Bison going to Come down with it momentarily. Now the Lady Warriors trying to chip it back away here. To the middle of the field for the Lady Bison. Hunt sweeps it away and takes it away. Ball's loose in the midfield. Taken down by Simmons. Give it for Nayeli Aguayo. Going to come up the field now for the Lady Warriors. Chance for the Lady Bison to get on top of it. Ball comes outside. Bison nearly lost it, and then it does go out across the uh, sideline there. So ball in for the Lady Warriors and Nayeli Aguayo. Aguayo looks for options. Hanging out on the ball there. Finally taken away by the Lady Bison defense. Will be a throw in here for Aguayo from the far sideline. Into the second minute now, all the way across the top here, trying to get it down. For Simmons, it comes back for Aguayo, chipped off her though. Out of the middle, ball runs through for the Lady Bison, down for Navarro. She'll turn to the outside looking for help. Now she'll go to the outside, try to drive forward, shut off there by the Bison defense. 
Nice job to protect it, though, as Simmons and Navarro do an exchange. Now Navarro, a chance to run towards the box, goes across the top of the 18. Ball is loose, and Aguayo swipes at it wide of the far post there. Spinning awkwardly is going to be tough to get a clean boot onto that one. So out of the goal here, Tara Bowden going to send it away, just short here into the back four. A little touch on, Stamatakos going to bring this one back into play for Aguayo, going to give for Stamatakos to run after. Is she going to be the first there? She is swept away out there. Might have been Bessler on the defense, can't quite see the number from this far out. Nayeli Aguayo chests it down for Stamatakos. Across the middle for Yehida Aguayo, cleared off by the Lady Bison chance for... Simmons to track it down and does outside for Navarro. Turns the inside, leaves it off for Simmons again. Now she'll turn inside, trying to keep control of it and does. All the way back in the midfield, bad ball there, intercepted by the Lady Bison. Chance at a little counterattack here. Lady Warriors retreating with Warren. Ball goes to the outside, Lundgren going to try to defend there. Into the middle it goes. Hunt sweeps it away and comes up the outside. Down for the Lady Bison. Emma Duncan out there. Drives forward. Lady Warriors able to take it away. Now Aguayo, a chance to run with it. Going to go out for Stamatakos. She's got a chance to run onto this one. Does try to tap it to the inside. And the Lady Bison able to take it away. And Stamatakos just has it pop off her and out of play. So a Bison throwing across the far sideline. 26-38 left in this opening half into the fourth minute of this championship match. Ball in, right to Stamatakos, took it away, trying to launch it forward off of the Lady Bison. It'll be a Lady Warrior throw in. Warren has come forward for the Lady Warriors. Guayo taking her time, trying to pick out her target. Throws it deep in, looking for Yehida Guayo, bouncing awkwardly, cleared off by the Lady Bison, out of play, kind of the same area for a throw in for the Lady Warriors, and now... Robertson going to come forward. So just three across the back line now for the Lady Warriors. They have some attackers forward. And the ball down onto the field. Stamatakos trying to take it away, chipped away from her. But Stamatakos plays out across the end line for a goal kick. Bowden kind of resets to the other side for a goal kick. Looking for options now. Just going to go short to the outside. Puts her defender under some real pressure. That's a Lady Warrior throw in now with Navarro. Thrown in looking for Simmons. Chipped around back out for Navarro. Half cleared here by the Lady Bison. Simmons able to get it for Warren. Trying to go out for Stamatakos. Nice job by Allie to bring that under control. But then some recovery defense from the Lady Bison. Trying to go up the outside, but it's... Played out across the end line there, and Lady Warriors will bring in the throw from right-hand side of your screen. Down for Warren. Up ahead for Nayeli Aguayo. She'll take a heavy touch here forward, trying to get it into the 18, throwing it over out of play, though. It's kind of looking for Yehida or Katya Navarro on the backside there, but couldn't quite wrap her foot around it to keep it in play. Five and a half minutes into this one, still awaiting our first goal of this championship match as the ball comes down for Navarro, but out of the outside. Nice job by Katya. Use a little strength. Ball going to come into the midfield. A little uh, coming together there as the Bison win it. Down to the feet of Aubrey Irish. Tries to step around one and does so successfully. Going to the outside now. Intercepted there by the Lady Warriors. Launched forward by Lundgren. Nayeli Aguayo. Touch it midfield. Lady Bison have it. Trying to go to the outside. Intercepted by Stamatakos. Going to chip it over the top. Going to try to get it all the way back for Navarro, I believe. As the Lady Bison going to have to pick it up at the top of the 18. Able to get it here to the outside now for uh, Darnell. Navarro going to try to get it back here. Kind of an awkward ball for the Lady Warriors to have to deal with. Going to go outside now for Robertson, able to get the Lady Warriors out of some trouble there after the long ball from Navarro. 
Now a good find to the outside, giving some space for Lundgren. Now give for Stamatakos, and dribbles past one defender here, and now Ali a chance to run up the far side. Give it, though, for... Aguayo, give and go now for Stamatakos. She has a chance to get onto it. Just some good defending at the last second there by Emma Duncan. Stamatakos tried to come across to take that away. Couldn't complete the steal. And then Aguayo steps inside one defender. Now it's going to drop down for Yahida Aguayo. Going to go to the outside for Nayeli. Just a little wide for her. And Buffalo comes spinning away with the ball. Now it's kind of an awkward one. Runs through on Irish. But now comes the outside for Darnell. Good pass to the inside here. Ball at midfield. Now trying to go further up the field there through Irish, but it's intercepted by Warren. Now she'll give for Stamatakos. Good job to stand in front of that one uh, on the outside by Ruth Mantle. See a check-in for the Bison. Piper Hodgins into the game. So Hodgins in the game, going to be a long jog across the field here for the Lady Bison she is replacing, which I think is Ruth Mantle. About eight minutes into this game here, been good pressure from the Lady Warriors thus far. Had a couple of good looks at getting it on goal. So Bison try for a long through ball up the sidelines. Now it's quickly in for Warren, now still loose, chipped ahead. All bouncing up through the air. A little back touch by the Bison. Nayeli Aguao trying to take it away. Does with her strength. Then rolls it out for Stamatakos. A little 50-50 ball. Alley comes away with that one. And going to look to dribble to the inside. Back for Nayeli Aguayo. Quick touch for Warren. Now coming ahead for Yahida Aguayo. Trying to chip it out for Stamatakos. Ball bouncing awkwardly off the uh, Lady Bison there. Going to stay with the Lady Warriors on a throw in. Throw in coming down for Stamatakos. Tried to chip it over the top there and played it out. Bison trying to get the throw in done. Stamatakos going to win a throw in. Try to throw it over the top here for Nayeli Aguayo. Now this one could drop for Yahida Aguayo as she'll take the header on. Couldn't quite get enough on to that one, though, into the waiting heart arms of Tara Bowden. And the Lady Bison going to come out of there as it's launched into the middle of the field. Warren trying to latch on to it, able to... Send it away, half away here as the Lady Warriors now got to deal with some pressure forward. Lundgren going to come across a Bison defender and earn a throw-in for the Lady Warriors. And now they're going to hold off the throw for some changes. Rivers, Carroll, and uh, Anaya Saavedra into the game. Simmons and Yahida Aguayo going to get a break here. Now the ball is going to come up ahead for an open Nayeli Aguayo. She has a chance to run. Going to try to get it ahead for Rivers. Carroll, too heavy a touch there, though. Like the idea on the attack, 10 minutes into this one, 1956 on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard as the Lady Warriors send it right ahead for Rivers. Carroll, she'll give it now for Aguayo. Steps across, trying to get that through ball. Just enough defending there by the Lady Bison to turn it away. Now they'll try to get it into the middle field and do. Biss it forward as Robertson probably just going to have to play this one out and does across this near touch line. Change coming as Kelly McIntosh going to come into the game. Maddie Ludwig comes to the bench. Bison now towards the 18, chip forward well wide of the uh, well wide of the target there. So it'll be a goal kick now for Segetti and the Lady Warriors, but usually Emma Hunt takes these, and that'll be the same story this time around. Ball up ahead into the middle of the field, just a little stabbing foot out to take that away was Bissett. Now the Bison will work through the middle. Lady Warriors going to try to force a turnover here and do. Aguayo up ahead for Rivers. Carroll let that one run through, but couldn't take it away. Then barrels over her. The defender for the Lady Bison there is uh, taking a hit. Sarah Slaw.
First foul of the game. Ball comes up ahead here. Katya Navarro got a piece of that one. Saavedra able to get it now for Katya. And now a 50-50 chance of the ball, and the Lady Bison can't quite bring that one down. And good hustle by both players, Slaw and Navarro. Robertson going to throw this one over the top. Down for Navarro. Gets it into the middle for Saavedra. A little heavy touch there. Trying to go outside. Stamatakos had it half intercepted, then Warren does the rest, but just bouncing around possession here in the middle of the field. Bison going for a long ball here, but Warren denies. Now the Bison high touch out here on the touch line on the far side, played out by Lundgren. Throw in for the Lady Bison. To go to the middle of the field here. That's going to be intercepted again by Saavedra. Tried to turn away, but turned into trouble. And Saavedra then lost out on it again. Now a little through ball. And the Lady Warriors just going to have to play it out here to the near sideline for uh, Espinosa to have to deal with there. So it's a throw in here in the attacking half. Looked like a foul throw there, but nothing called. Cross the goal there. Segetti just pushed it away. Now they're going to say actually let it go through, so it will be a goal kick for Segetti and the Lady Warriors. Hannah Baker into the game for the Lady Bison. <clears throat> Substitution going to come to the sideline. Like uh, it's that Jalen Wright coming out of the game. So Hunt going to take on the goal kick. And now coming up ahead is Nyelia Aguayo. Chance to run forward. Lady Warriors' best chance here of the game so far. Now Aguayo going to take it across the net. And she scores goal! Lady Warriors, Nyelia Aguayo. She let that one play across the defender, ran onto it, had Carroll to the middle of the field, but struck it with a right foot across goal and into the near side corner pocket for Nyelia Guay on the Lady Warriors on top in the championship game here at the, uh, looked like a, would have been a 16th or a 15th minute goal for the Lady Warriors. So now the Lady War is going to take it away quickly in the midfield. Carroll for Katya Navarro, trying to go back to the middle for Saavedra. Could not. Warren going to take it away, though. Turns from trouble. Now going to try to find it outside for Navarro to run on to. Katya's got the pace here momentarily. Got it off the uh, goalkeeper there. Danger for the Lady Bison. Last ditch defending there. Great sliding tackle to, to save a golden chance there by Sarah Slaw. Good defending in the end. Stamatakos will come across the field to take this near side corner kick here just out of the left side of your screen. Lady Warriors leading 1-0 here in the 16th minute. Stamatakos across the goal to the backside, and Aguayo lifted a leg there. Would have taken a real athletic effort there for her to reach out and get that one. Like the pace, though, that... Stamatakos is bringing those in at. Now a throw in for the Bison. Going to come down for Stamatakos. A little 50-50 ball. And now the Lady Bison in a little bit of trouble. And it's going to be Bison throwing across that far sideline. Ball thrown ahead. Ball kind of bouncing around loosely. The Lady Bison able to get a piece of it. Now again, another awkward ball for the Lady Warriors. Going to be able to play it to the outside. Robertson brought it down but dropped it into a dangerous area. Block away by Hunt in the end, whipping at it that time where the Lady Bison just enough defending there as Robertson takes a sighing breath there as Emma Hunt came over to do the, uh, do the defending in the end was Hannah Zink with the best opportunity for the Lady Bison of the game. Warren going to come to the sideline. Didn't see who checked in for. I'll try to get that check in. Hard ball out of the uh, goal there by Hunt is taken away by the Lady Bison. Now a heavy touch and a uh, shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder tackle there and a foul going to go in against Aubrey Irish. So the Lady Warriors will have a free kick here in the 
defensive half. 13-20 left to go in the first half. Lady Warriors leading on a 16th minute Nayeli Aguayo goal. Ball bounced to the outside here for the Lady Bison. Headed away momentarily by Stamatakos. Just taps it ahead off the forehead. Now takes it away. Up ahead for Aguayo again. She has Rivers Carroll running through the middle. Gets it to Rivers. Touch on now. It's a foot race. Carroll across the goal. It's going to go. Rivers Carroll just got enough on that one to beat the goalkeeper into that near side post. Lady Warriors double it up here in the 18th minute as it was Nayeli Aguayo to open the scoring. Rivers Carroll. Back-to-back -back games with goals here on the McKamey Broadcasting Network as Rivers Carroll didn't play the first couple of games and now here in these last two that we've had, she's got a pair of goals. That one again, that was just a strength goal there. A great pass from Nayeli Aguayo. has got a goal and assist now. And it was Carroll just to get enough on that one. It was a foot race and then it was a strength on strength battle and Carroll came out of it victorious. So the Lady Warriors now leading 2-0 in the 18th minute of this one. Stamatakos working hard on the far sideline. Now a chance for one for the Lady Bison to run on to, but good defending out there in the end. Cleared away. Now Lady Warriors trying to take it away in the midfield. Carroll back there doing defending now in the midfield. And then Simmons won a tackle. Touch of the inside, soft touch on the Lady Bison, but Simmons able to shoulder her off of it. Good play there as Stamatakos now up for Nayeli Aguayo. Lady Warriors have stayed on the attack but lose out there as the Lady Bison play to the outside. There is Stamatakos and look like maybe Espinosa out there. And then the ball launched ahead. Lady Bison have to deal with this one and able to hoist it forward. Hunt, good read there. Touch it to the inside, then lost out on the second touch. Lady Bison, first real chance here. Sagetti's going to be able to come forward and claim this and does confidently. So the Lady Warriors turn away that attacking chance as Sagetti bounces. This one could go over the top here for Navarro to chase after. She's able to get onto it, touches it through. Now it's a foot race. Sarah Slaw going to get there first, but Navarro took it back, then tried to go to the middle of the field, able to cycle it outside for Bailey Howard, the Lady Bison, and now a good ball touchdown for Mackenzie Bissett, but then taken away by Saavedra, then given away again. Ball bouncing back and forth in possession. Lundgren and Stamatakos trying to hook up there, but uh, out of play for a Bison throw in. All around, Lundgren sticks out a foot there to... Do some defending, taken down by the Lady Bison at midfield and lost out to Stamatakos. Here's Aguayo going to turn to the inside. Read well by the defender, but Aguayo going to leave it there for Simmons. Simmons up ahead. She'll look to the outside. Going to try to complete a pass there, but right into the, pass of the path of the Bison defense. Now it's Espinosa. A little hot shot forward for Saavedra, and then Stamatakos first, maybe first mistouch of Allie's so far today as we go inside the final 10 minutes of this opening half. Mass changes coming here. Kira Wolfenden, Lauren Carmona, also Yahida Guayo, Kinley Hoffman, I believe, into the game as well. So throwing across the far sideline here for the Lady Bison. Bringing it in here under a little of pressure almost immediately as Wolfenden chests this one down. Back out now for Hunt. Leaves it off for Espinosa. Just launches one up ahead and able to deflect it out of bounds there was Sarah Slaw. Hoffman throw in here for Nayeli Aguayo. Brought it down. Soft touch there. Now back for Simmons. Going to give a chance for Wolfenden to run after one. Defending in the back here by the Bison. And again, I think it's Slaw again to able to turn that away. That attack, no, actually that was uh, Maddie Ludwig with the good defending for the Lady Bison. Here's Yehida Aguayo looking for a long throw in. Has it into the 18, dangerously tapped down. Nayeli Aguayo tried to turn and hit that, but the Lady Bison able to sprint away with it up the far wing. 
A good touch to the inside here for the Lady Bison, but then a bad pass taken away momentarily by Nyla Aguayo. Now the Lady Bison with it. Hoffman trying to step forward and take that one away. Just a battle at the feet here at midfield. Bison come away with it in the end. Now a little through ball to chase. Chance for Segetti to get on this one, and brave goalkeeping again. Nice job by Sam Segetti to come out and claim that one for the Lady Warriors. We head into the 23rd minute of this opening half. Ball bouncing at midfield. Nayla Aguayo couldn't take it away. Saavedra steps in front. Now to the outside. Lunger able to intercept. Stepped on the ball, though. A little awkward moment there, but able to get it away and out of play across the far touchline. Changes coming here. Lady Warriors bringing in Elena Studi into the game. And on the other side, it's Jalen Wright back into the game for Lady Bison. So throw in for the Lady Bison across the far sideline. Ball almost intercepted there outside by Lundgren. Now touch inside for the Lady Bison, comes back into the 18, but Segetti's going to be there to pick that one up. So Sam Segetti to the top of the 18 here to boot this one away and does, but touchdown by the Lady Bison again. This is down for Bissett, then lost out. Studi, or no, excuse me, that was, that was Studi that had intercepted it. Now Nayeli Aguayo trying to get it up ahead for Carmona to chase, but... Couldn't complete the pass, and then the Lady Bison can't do the same either on the far sideline. Lady Warrior throw in coming, trying to get it in for Carmona. Spins to the inside. Nice little touch there from Carmona. And now here into the middle of the field for Simmons. He didn't quite get there, though, and Lundgren will have the ball on the outside for a throw in. Comes in again for Carmona, trying to turn away from the defenders, but secondary defending, good there from the Lady Bison, but then out across the touchline on the far side. So Lundgren will walk it up the field a bit. Touch through by Studi, then lost out, but then trying to win it back. Dives in, but still surrenders the Lady Bison throw in. Gretchen Ferris into the game now for Mackenzie Bissett, I believe. No, that's actually number five, Hannah Zink. Throw in going to come in now for the Lady Bison. Come to the outside, Wolfenden in the area, but a good touch by Sarah Slaw. Then a sliced half clearance there by the Lady Bison. Going to come down for Aguayo. Has Carmona on the outside. Lauren running, chips it to the inside. Going to come down for Yahida Aguayo with the right foot, ripped it, but over the top of the crossbar and out of play. Good touch there and good run by Carmona up the outside as she gave Yahida Aguayo a good chance at the top of the box. Remember, join us for the halftime show. We'll wrap up the goals, get you ready for the second half. Also preview the Warrior Boys Championship game coming up a little bit later on. Lady Warriors going to have a throw in here soon. Ball thrown ahead, looking for Nyelia Guao. Couldn't complete the pass there. A little back heel from the uh, Lady Bison there and then spread it into the middle of the field. Trying to go for a give and go, but at the end of it, couldn't clear it off there. Hunt has a little bit of trouble, but then Espinoza turns away from it and Carmona waited for that ball to come to her, let the defender just get a piece of it. Now she'll have a chance to go back. Lundgren going to launch it forward here. Chance for Nyelia Guao to go after it, but then out of play by the Lady Bison across the far far side of the field here. Another throw in for Lundgren. She'll launch it up high for Studi, and then Yehida Guao going to win it momentarily. Got it out for Nayeli. Now going to look to go across the middle as one Buffalo Lady Bison defender took a hard shot there as that was Ruth Mantle, I think, that caught that one 
across the across the face there and I think she'll be all right, but probably going to send in a substitution here as Piper Hodgins comes off the bench. So a stoppage as hustling off the field there is Ruth Mantle. I think Ruth would be all right, most likely, but the referee just... Uh, Doing the safe thing there, bringing Mantle off the field there. She took a hard shot on that uh, that kick there from the Lady Warriors. Probably going to be a drop ball situation here between the two squads as the referee comes over. So the ball dropped down here. Aguile going to try to dance to the outside, able to win a throw for the Lady Warriors. Far sideline, they'll look to throw it up for Carmona. They're going to run it, walk it up the sideline here with throw-ins. Ball boy having to work hard out there. Got one back for Nayeli Aguile. She'll come forward to take the throw. Looks to throw it over the top, trying to find Yehida Aguile. Came out for Carmona, then... Good defending at the top of the box there by Lady Bison. Good pass out as well to find Ferris. And then Studi going to do some defending, but last touch by Studi and the Lady Warriors. And a ball bounced forward from the Lady Bison. Try to cross the field here. Hoffman going to have to let that one bounce through and then possibly launch it ahead, but takes it out across the uh, near touch line. Ball runs through on a... Uh, throw in, but now they're actually going to call a free kick. So free kick in the attacking half here for the Lady Bison. So Aubrey Irish on top of this one. Lady Warriors have to be aware near the top of the 18. Shot comes through, but it's going to go all the way through past Segetti's near post as we have just two minutes now remaining here in the opening half on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. 2-0 the lead on a Nayeli Aguayo and Rivers Carroll goals in the opening half. Hunt takes it across the middle now as it continues to run forward. Going to find its way all the way to Yehida Aguayo. Turns to the inside. Now going to try to take it past one defender and launches it for their long ball for Carmona to possibly have to chase after. And then cleared away by the Bison keeper. Out of play for a Lady Warrior throw in. Ball comes down, trying to get it for Carmona. Tipped to the outside again. Lady Bison just played across the touch line. Minute 10 to go here in the 29th minute of the first 30-minute half of this championship game. Ball comes towards the top of the 18. Lady Bison able to send that one away. A good clearance that time around as the Bison now a quick chance to run, but nice defending there by Lundgren, able to move forward a bit. And Lady War is going to have it just on the outside. Aguayo turns. Now a long ball forward here by the Lady War is going to go down near the corner, and Lady Bison is going to have to chip it out of play. Just 30 seconds go. Lady War has got to be aware of the clock here, trying to maybe secure a late third goal here in the end of this half. Ball headed on. It's going to come down for Wolfenden. Stepped through. Just cleared. No, into the back of the net there. It's going to be an own goal on the Lady Bison there. Just unfortunate, trying to clear it off. And that is a third goal for the Lady Warriors. The Lady Bison were under pressure, trying for that clearing kick, came spinning off the edge of the boot and over the top of the head of Bowden and into the back of the net. And that ends half number one in favor of the Lady Warriors commanding 3 nothing lead here, as was the same story in the semifinal. They'll get uh, into the second half with a three-goal lead. Again, just an unfortunate own goal at the end there for the Lady Bison. So Lady Warriors head into the halftime break up.
Three to nothing. Pinnacle Bank scoreboard will wrap up the goals for you in the halftime show coming your way next. And as well, we'll look forward to the boys' championship matchup and as well get you going for second half. Varsity Girls Soccer Action of the 2024 Pinnacle Cup Championship at Warrior Stadium here on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. Pizza in Woolen, the classiest pizza around. Sally's offers pizza made with fresh dough daily. Go with a classic single topping or load it up with the king. Ten toppings in all. Friday, football and pizza is a winning combination. The Warrior Special is available all school year. Get a large two-topping pizza and a two-liter for just $16.98. Fridays only. Sally's Classic Pizza, 1214 Bighorn Avenue or call 347-2453. Swing Trucking is a family-owned and operated company in Worland, Wyoming, offering trucking services for a host of industries. They have done extensive work in Wyoming, Montana, North Dakota, and Colorado, as well as surrounding Rocky Mountain states for the past 70 years. Their modern and up-to-date equipment allows them to provide full-service solutions for their customers' needs, from start to completion. Swing Trucking, 347-4161. Swing Trucking is a proud supporter of McKamey Broadcasting and Worland High School Athletics. I wish I was a little bit smaller, a mini shack baller. I wouldn't have to yell when I talk to a toddler. I wish I had more leg room on a plane or a train. Life is tough when you're taller. Yeah, I shop it big and tall. But when it comes to my Pepsi, I like to keep it nice and small. A soft drink for your pocket. So light and refreshing, one sip, don't knock it. So the next time you have to check out line, grab some Pepsi minis, but get your own. Because these are all mine, mine, mine. And welcome back to Warrior Stadium. If you're just joining us, Lady Warriors enjoying a 3-0 Pinnacle Bank scoreboard lead here in this uh, 2024 Pinnacle Cup Championship match. Lady Warriors opened the scoring with Nyelia Guayo in the 16th minute. It was a counter-attacking opportunity. The Bison had defenders well forward. A hot ball through the middle of the field. Saw Guile able to let it run across her body, and then it was a foot race against her defender, finished with the right foot. Then kind of the same story for Rivers Carroll in the 18th minute as Nyelia Guile was able to slide a pass on the uh, top end of the 18, and Carroll was just able to outmuscle her defender and get it across the goal into the near side post of uh, Bowden's goal for the Buffalo Lady Bison. And then in the 40th minute, it's the unfortunate thing that happens in time to time in soccer matches. It was an own goal for the Lady Bison defense that sees them trail 3-0 to the Lady Warriors on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard here at the midway mark. We're going to possibly have a conversation with one of our uh, Warrior head or assistant head coaches here at the half. We'll see if we have enough time or they can make it to the booth. But if so, that'll come your way next. If not, We'll uh, continue to prep you for half number two here, the 2024 Pinnacle Cup Championship match. World and Lady Warriors 3. Buffalo Lady Bisons here on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. This is World and Lady Warriors Soccer on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. Asco Industrial Supply is known for their industrial hoses, steel products, and trailers, but they'll surprise you with products for every customer. Check out Lazy One Clothing, matching pajamas, and more. Kill Tech Jackets for kids and adults, ready to protect you from old man winter. Stay cozy and stylish with Trail Crest Blankets. Stuck? Not a chance with Yankum Kinetic Ropes for every size ride. Give Hasco Industrial Supply a call at 347-6158 or stop in at 415 Bighorn Avenue in Worland. The Warrior Supporter Shield. Join the war party. 
Thank you to the following War Party members. Jay's Detail, 1626 U.S. Highway 20, 347-2071. Bryant Honey, Pure Wyoming Honey and Pollination Services. Sage Creek Land and Cattle Company. Bighorn Federal Savings Bank, 1006 Bighorn Avenue, 347-6196. Want to join the War Party? Call 307-431-1468 or email mckamiebroadcasting at gmail.com. Ladies and gentlemen, are your diesel engines letting you down? Need a fix that's top-notch, fast, and reliable? DPS is your go-to destination. We are fueled by excellence and driven by expertise. From trucks to trailers, no job's too tough for our skilled crew. We've got the latest technology to get your diesel roaring again. Choose DPS where you decide and we provide. Stop in at 1051 North 10th Street in Worland. Call us 347-4410 or visit us on the web at dps307.com. Here in Wyoming, we live by the spirit of the Wild West. Now where the sun's a little brighter, where the snows that fall are a trifle wider, where the bonds of home are a wee bit tighter, that's where the West begins. We're the bank that's with you wherever that spirit leads, because we're more than a bank in Wyoming. We're Wyoming in a bank. Pinnacle Bank, the way banking should be. McGarvin Moberly Construction, a Whirlin institution, is celebrating 60 years in business. McGarvin Moberly is a specialized construction company with a focus on highway rehabilitation, maintenance, and reconstruction. For as many years as they've been in business, they've supported Whirlin High School Athletics, and that tradition continues with the support of McKamey Broadcasting. McGarvin Moberly wishes good luck and success to all Whirlin Warrior and Lady Warrior teams this season. McGarvin Moberly, 60 years and counting. Go Warriors! And we're back here at Warrior Stadium, so unfortunately not going to have time for that uh, halftime conversation, but the uh, Warriors and the Torrington Trailblazers going to match up in the boys' championship game next as the Warriors took out the Buffalo Bison 2-0 on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard in their semifinal a little earlier today. Of course, the uh, Lady Warriors leading 3-0 Pinnacle Bank scoreboard here at the halftime mark against the Buffalo Lady Bison. The Torrington Trailblazers won in an exciting penalty shootout that went to a sudden death shootout they won at seven to six over the uh over the green river wolves so it'll be the warriors and trailblazers for the boys pinnacle cup championship coming your way after the conclusion of this one lady warriors 30 minutes away from another pinnacle cup uh championship here on their home turf at warrior stadium we'll find out if they can do it next that wraps up our halftime show lady warriors soccer at the 2024 pinnacle cup Continues next in the second half on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. Construction in Worland offers roofing services, home renovation, and new home construction. Free estimates, plus they handle all insurance claims for a stress-free, streamlined process. Asphalt shingles, rubber roofs, TPO, and metal roofing. Bids for commercial or residential. Housing remodels, new construction, sidings, windows, concrete, and more. Stellar Roofing and Construction has the expertise and experience to get it done right. Stellar Roofing and Construction, 347-3289, or stop in at 1115 Bighorn Avenue in Worland. Yeah, you can grab it. Welcome back here to the Pinnacle Cup Championships here. We got an assistant head coach, Zach Lemka, throwing on the uh, headset for a real quick top talk. Coach, uh, game against Buffalo, win 2 nothing. get into another Pinnacle Cup Championship match. What are you hoping to take out of the opening two games to bring into the next one against the Torrington Trailblazers? They'll be riding high after a penalty shootout victory. You know, just after the two games that we played uh, so far in this tournament, um, we just – try to get better each and every game. We try to figure out what we can excel at and what we can obviously work on. This tournament's awesome because it's the beginning of the season. Everybody kind of is their rawest form. Nobody's had time to polish up all season long and work on stuff, and that's a great thing for us and every other team that's here is you guys get to see what you do need to work on later on in the season, and we get to see what uh, we can take away from each game that we do get to play. Well, Coach, real quick conversation, obviously, as we're heading into the second half of the girls' championship game. Any final thoughts about this championship matchup against Torrington before we let you go into the final preparations? No, it should be a very good game. We're really excited for it. Just hopefully uh, 
both teams go out there and, I mean, play their hardest. I mean, that's all we can ever expect from any of these boys. Assistant Coach Zach Lemka joining us. Coach, thanks for the minute of your time. Appreciate you. Thank you. Zach Lepka there is the Worland Warriors going to take on the Torrington Trailblazers after this one, but ready to go and underway in the second half as the Lady Warriors will have the first kick of the ball here as Simmons trying to get it up ahead for Nyelia Guau. Stamataka is going to take it away there. Lady Warriors in those home oranges. But the Bison take it away with Irish trying for a little give and go there, and it's going to go out across the touchline, a Lady Warrior throw in, going to be taken, I believe it's by Lundgren here on this sideline. Get it ahead, trying to get it for Stamatakos. The Lady Bison able to save that one in as Nayeli Guao heads it on, but only as far as the Lady Bison in the midfield. Again, the Lady Warriors in a comfortable position, but doesn't mean you can play comfortably in the second half, leading 3 0 as we're just about 45 seconds into this second 30 minute half. Yahido Guao wins it in the midfield and just lifted forward by Nayeli, but going to come all the way back for Bowden in the goal to scoop up. 3 0 Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. Lady Warriors lead it. Goal kick out here to the near side wing. Stamataco is able to get onto it, just kind of stepped it forward. Now Yahido Guao, after a little mistake in the back four, going to have a chance here, going to try to slide it through to. Simmons, she's going to have a chance to track it down. Can't quite keep it in play there. The ball just got on that uh, turf and kept riding out of play there, and Simmons couldn't quite track it down. So goal kick coming here for the Lady Bison. Comes out of the back here, trying to just get it quickly to the outside. Navarro's going to apply some pressure. Lady Bison kept it in momentarily, but then Navarro is able to separate the Lady Bison from the ball. Aguayo back now for Warren. Then she's dispossessed. And it comes ahead, chipped away by Maddie Robertson. Back for the Lady Bison to try to get on it and set up the attack. Coming through the midfield as Warren steps in front of that centering pass. Then a nice little dummy there through the legs that time for the Lady Bison by Irish, but unable to get the second touch to it. Lundgren just trying to do some defending, has to play it out here across the near touch line. Throw in for Buffalo. Irish chips it over the top, going to try to bring it down against some pressure of Simmons. Nice job by Taylor Simmons, good defending. And now Katya Navarro, chance to get it up ahead, looking for Nyeli Aguile, but couldn't hook up there. So Bison take back over, trying to go to the outside. Hot shot pass there, and it's going to go out of play for Lady Warrior throw in. 33rd minute ticking away here as the Lady Warriors lead it. 3-0 Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. Again, two goals by the Lady Warriors. Own goal by the Buffalo Lady Bison as Irish latches onto a ball here, trying to go to the outside. Thrown back up the field by Navarro. Now the Bison chance to exchange. Good uh, small space interchange on the passes. Now they're going to try the uh, far touch line and last touch by the Lady Warriors. So Bison going to keep possession here. Far touch line throw in. Lady Warriors trying to defend it away. Across the top of the box here. Lady Bison going to try to go to the outside. Lundgren, though, going to use the pace. Kept this in play, though. And it is going to go out of play across the near touch line here. And will come off of the uh, Lady Bison last. But a throw intercepted on top of the 18. Lady Bison chance to reset the attack. Centering pass intercepted by Nyelia Guao. Chipped ahead chance for... Simmons to go chase after it, but it's taken down pretty easily by the Lady Bison defense, but then intercepted by Stamatakos, leans in, tries to take this away, and does. Yada Guau trying to go quickly for Simmons, and Taylor can't quite track that one down. Trying for a little give-and-go pass there. Launched up ahead here by the Lady Bison, going to run across the uh, touch line, but out of play. Lundgren did a good job of shepherding that one out of play. Going to drop it back off for Hunt. And she'll hit a hot one across the middle, but it's intercepted by the Lady Bison. Chance to get it into the middle, but this one's going to roll harmlessly to Sam Segetti. 
And she'll have a goal kick coming out here out of the 18-yard box. Lifts it ahead. Touch from Simmons, but couldn't spin it out here for Stamatakos. Touch in for Aubrey Irish. Comes ahead, intercepted by Warren. Aguayo trying to give it back for Warren, but it's intercepted. And then a too heavy a pass there to the outside by the Lady Bison. So that was uh, Ruth Mantle trying to spread it to the outside. And good, good to see Mantle back in the game after she took that shot. Katya Navarro trying to go up the far touch line. Just a heavy touch there, though. The ball comes down for the Lady Bison, intercepted by Warren, but came off her awkwardly, able to use the strength, though, in the middle of the field to take it away. Then intercepted by Mar uh, Mantle, but it's left there for Stamatakos. Allie's going to have to keep a good touch to keep it in play, does, but the defending done by Jalen Wright. And the Lady Warriors going to have a near sideline throw and going to find it up ahead for Nyeli Guaya. Let that one run between the wickets there and whipped out of play by Mantle. So Stamatakos, another throw in chance. Gonna throw it up ahead for Nayeli Aguayo. Going to hold on to the ball here. Spin to the inside. Pass her defender mantle. Chance to center this one up. Left it behind, but now going to take it back away from mantle. Looking for some options as she's going to try to get it to the inside. Try to slip it through a couple of defenders. Going to be a Lady Warrior throw, and Aguayo is going to take this one on. Wow, long throw in here to the middle of the 18. Throwing them. Out of there, out of the danger zone by the Lady Bison. Now Yahida Guao, the long throw-in specialist, coming to the sideline and going to throw it in long here. Going to look for Nyelia Guao, headed it on high header there and heads it a second time but into the hands of Bowden. Good save there, stayed in the middle of her goal. Going to look for a throw out but now kicks it away as... Jasmine Espinoza sticks out a foot to intercept that one, and then the Lady Bison going to try to go quickly through the middle. And again, another tackle by Espinoza, and then by Warren, but the Lady Bison back onto it. Chance to run. Have a couple of numbers there, but the Lady Bison left it behind, and Espinoza going to try to go out for Stamatakos, but ran across the body there and out of play. Changes coming here. Studi into the game. Saavedra as well for Simmons and Warren. 22-30 left in this game as we're in the 38th minute. Throw in here for the Lady Bison. Intercepted by the Lady Warriors. Bouncing around now. Good 50-50 uh, challenge there by Stamatakos. It's going to be the Lady Warrior throw in. And again, they're going to slow things up because it's going to be Lady Warriors to throw it in here. And Lundgren on top of that. Going to try to throw it in for Stamatakos. A little awkward bouncing ball there. Saavedra onto it momentarily, but then left it behind here and a chance for Lady Bison to try to get the attack going, but second pass wasn't there. And now a little takeaway by Nyeli Guayo and a heavy challenge there in the midfield. Going to be a free kick for the Lady Warriors as Nyeli gets chopped down there. Chance to bring some players forward here with Hunt set to send it away. Again, Hunt this season went from attacker to defender, so trying to have that experience in the back four. Gets it up ahead for Saavedra, brings it down. Anaya looks ahead. Now going to try to get it for Stamatakos, but it's rejected there by the Bison defense. They try to repel the Lady Warriors' attack here in the second half as Hunt able to get a quick foot onto that. Now Espinoza, heavy touch there, but nobody up ahead for the Lady Bison as Robertson has a little bit of time to step onto this one and kept it in play. Going to give it for Hunt and Espinoza. Hunt plays it off of a Lady Bison. Going to be a deep throw in for the Lady Warriors down in the uh, far touchline corner there. High throw over the top, brought down by Navarro. Now Saavedra steps through, but the Bison going to come back and reclaim it. Nice job to, to step in front of that one there for the uh, Lady Warriors. That was Robertson that 
Got involved on that one. Stama Taco. She's going to run on this one. Great touch by Allie. She can run up the wing now. Lady Warrior is going to try to get into the 18. Left it there. You hide a Guaya, a little shoulder to shoulder, and they're going to say that illegally a shoulder to shoulder. As the Lady Warriors get tagged for a free kick, there is Guaya uh, just a little too physical there against Emma Duncan. So free kick out of the 18 yard box for the Lady Bison. Taking a little while to decide who's going to take it here with 19.35 left on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. Still 3-0 Lady Warriors. Comes into the middle. Lady Warriors have a chance to take it back. In the middle with Studi trying to go out for Navarro, but it's way too wide for Katya to go chase after. So it's a near touch line, or a far touch line in the throw in. Coming Hoffman coming into the game. Rivers Carroll as well. So you hide a Guayo. To the sideline as well as uh, looks like Katya Navarro coming to the sideline. Throwing for the Lady Bison. Good touch on there, but intercepted by Hoffman. Going to come to the middle of the field for Rivers Carroll. She can look to the outside. Has Stama Tacos there and also Aguayo. And a nice job by the Bison defense in the end. Uh, Get a piece of it. Should be a Lady Warrior corner kick, and it is. Stama Tacos out there again to take it. Looking for a little in-swinging ball here. Takes it right foot to it. Backside, a little tap down there. I think that was, uh, might have been Hunt on the backside. They got a piece of it. Good defending by Bowden, then throws it here towards the near, near touch line, and it's out of play as Lundgren will have a throw. Ball comes in for Saavedra, but couldn't get the foot to it. It's Lundgren now, another chance to clear it off, and two Lady Bison come there to collapse on defensively, but it'll be a Lady Warrior throwing again for Lundgren. Now Studi tap through, but now the ball's just kind of loose and bouncing in the midfield. And the Lady Bison trying for a quick touch there from McIntosh, and Hoffman had it half cleared there, and then going to work to the outside, going to try to get it up ahead for Hunt. So Hunt's come forward now for the Lady Warriors as the ball is again loose in the middle of the field. Studi steps in front, tries to get it for Hoffman, who is able to win it strongly here now, and Hunt wants the ball up the sideline and thinks she's going to be able to track this one down, and she is. Steps past the defender, going to step in across the 18. Good defending in the end by the Lady Bison, and the Lady Warriors have another set piece. And Hunt forward immediately infusing some attacking Power into this Lady Warriors in the second half. All across the 18, but right into the hands. It's loose, though, out in front of the goal. It's a scramble, and it comes off the post. It's still loose. Lady Warriors having a chance, and finally the Bison able to clear that one away as the Lady Warriors thought they had a golden opportunity at a fourth there as it went through the hands of, of Bowden. And through the legs, but now the Lady Warriors quickly throw it in for Aguayo, and Lady Bison finally have the clearance. Maddie Robertson stepped in front of one, and then is able to be the stronger of the two and actually going to win a free kick there in the middle of the field. So free kick coming just here from the left side of your screen. You can see Lundgren on it. Lundgren up ahead, going to try to get it here for Studi, but the Lady Bison going to have to defend on the top of the 18. The Lady Warriors continue to keep the pedal down with 16-10 to go in this championship match of the 2024 Pinnacle Cup. Ball comes in for Nayeli Aguao. Tries to spin it across the body there, cleared away by the Lady Bison. Throw in coming for Nayeli Aguao. Comes across the... Middle of the box here, half cleared, but Aguayo going to have a chance to step through on her defender, and that's going to be a foul there as kind of threw her defender to the side that time around as Aguayo, strong player, a little too strong that time around. Warriors in uh, 
Blazers on the uh, sidelines getting ready for their boys' championship match as Stamatakos does a good job to just let that one run past her as the ball is going to come in for Rivers Carroll trying to get it into the 18 bouncing awkwardly now Carroll a chance to get on top of it here touches to the inside going to look for a guile chance to sting it tried to go back for Carroll ball still loose in the box and then Rivers going to touch that one there and out of play across the end line trying to keep it in for the attack So goal kick coming here for the Lady Bison. Lady Warriors three, Lady Bison zero. Rivers Carroll trying to take that one down off the chest but could not. And Lady Bison trying for a long ball, speculative long ball, but Hoffman almost lost out there, but a good job to step back in front. And now a foul in the midfield. So the Lady Warriors starting to pick up a few of those ticky-tack fouls throughout the uh, middle of the play. Lady Bison have a free kick now. Ball launched forward here by the Lady Bison, trying to latch onto it now. Ball goes to the outside. Good defending by the Lady Warriors, and there'll be a throw in for the Lady Warriors. Ball thrown in now, looking for Hunt. Let that one run past her. Lady Bison trying to get it ahead, and they are going to keep it in play. Ball still loose, bouncing around. Hoffman trying to deal with it, could not there. Now a shot from all the way outside, and Segetti lets that one run, and it is going to be a throw-in now as that one hit the corner flag. It is a throw in here across the near touch line, thrown into the middle. Rivers Carroll turns away from trouble and good strength there from Rivers to deal with that one. And now a chance for Nyeli Aguao to chase this one up the near touch line. Just bounced out by the Buffalo Lady Bison there. Aguao going to throw it in, looking for Rivers Carroll. Couldn't connect on the... Uh, Throw in, ball's loose here to the near touch line as Studi comes across to take it away. Good uh, good strength there by Anias, uh, Elena Studi, and now the Lady Warriors have a chance again for Aguayo to cross it in. Across the face of goal, but coming to claim it was Bowden, and the Lady Warriors turned away on that attacking attempt. Lady Warriors doing some defending in the back. It's Espinosa just going to chip it away across the uh, far side touch line. 12.20 to go here in this second half as the uh, Lady Warriors and Lady Bison going to make some uh, changes here. So changes are just about complete here with the uh, Lady Bison coming to the sidelines. Throw in now, Lady Bison, chance to run up that uh, far sideline and last touch though by the Bison out of play. Good job by Hoffman to let that run across and out of play. Chance at the throw in now, going to try to throw it over the top, but the Bison going to take it back now, chip it to the middle of the field. Espinosa sticks out a leg to turn that one away, and now it's a uh, Battle in the midfield, brought down by the Lady Bison and taken away again by Espinoza. Ball's bouncing around here between the two squads all the way out. Nice job by, I think that was Stamatakos to take that away momentarily. Now Allie's on top of it, and she's going to dribble around a couple of Lady Bison. And she's got some uh, company on her right shoulder, but it's finally cleared off in the end by the Lady Bison defense. Going to be a throw-in for the Lady Warriors. Throw in quickly for Stamatakos. Chips it past a player there. Fancy footwork from Stamatakos, but in the end, enough defending by the Lady Bison to clear it off again. Now Stamatakos going to leave it for Lundgren. Mass changes come for Lady Warriors. Wolfenden, Carmona, Warren, Simmons, and Yahida Guayo going to come in. So Rivers Carroll, uh, Naya Saavedra coming to the side on Elena Studi. Nayeli Aguayo going to get her first break, I think, of the tournament so far. And the ball comes in for Yahida Aguayo. Wins it on the uh, 
throw in. Now going to try to keep it, and it'll, she'll step inside the 18 all the way across the box now for Hunt. Taps it down, and then a little handball looked like on top, but maybe just unintentional handball there as the Bison able to spread it out across the field to the far touchline for a Lady Warrior throw in. Hoffman set to take it. Ball going to come in looking for Wolfenden, but the Lady Bison clear it away, and Espinoza kind of get it back forward to Lady Bison on top of it momentarily, and then able to get it ahead. Good little soft touch there by the Lady Bison, but then enough defending in the back as Lundgren steps across and keeps possession. It'll be Simmons here in the midfield, chance to keep it in and does. Then splits two defenders with some good footwork there. Gets it for Warren. Warren can look to the outside. Going to try to slide it in for Hunt. Great pass here. Chance for it. Emma Hunt trying to go across goal. Still a chance at it. And then the Bison just do enough defending. Again, a little bit maybe too far outside to try to rip a shot across goal. And Espinosa going to have to come do a little defending again and does. And now Warren going to take on the Lady Bison. And Hunt going to try to spin away. 50-50 ball, and the Lady Warriors going to lose out on a uh, throw-in for the Lady Bison. Ball in now as Hoffman steps in to take it away, but then throws it out of play. Excuse me, uh, kicks it out of play, of course. 8.53 left in this one. We're into the 52nd minute. Three changes for the Lady Bison coming in. So the Bison complete the changes here and then throw it into the back four, launched forward off the foot of a Lady Bison out of the back four, but out of play. Chance here now for Hoffman to throw it in across the far touch line. Lady Warriors trying to maybe finish here with a flourish as Hunt takes it down, turns, tries to go to the inside, picked off her foot, and now Lady Bison maybe a half a chance here, but Lundgren able to... Take a piece of that one, then get it up ahead for Carmona, who back heels it back into play, and then a double team comes. Chance now for the Lady Bison to run. Not sure that this one's going to stay in play, though, and it does momentarily, and going to be a Lady Bison throw in there. I think that was Robertson having to do the defending. It was. She and Lundgren out there. Lady Bison trying to get a goal here to give themselves any kind of chance, but then a heavy touch out of play. Throw in now for the Lady Warriors. It's almost taken away by the Bison initially, but then Lady Warriors had it forward. Now Hoffman going to try to dribble to the outside, but last touch by the Lady Bison, so good defending out there. Ball trying to come forward for the Lady Warriors, but Lady Bison throwing everything forward now. They only have one defender in the defensive half, so they're going to Try everything now, and they're into the 18. Best chance of the half now, but the Lady Warriors able to half clear it now as Robertson's going to try to do the rest of the job. Aubrey Irish to the outside, but went out of play. 6.45 left here before the end of this one. Lady Warriors on their way towards a championship. Still just a little bit of defending left to do. Now a chance for Warren to try to get on to that one, but could not. But it's another Lady Warrior throwing here across the near sideline. Carmona thrown over the top looking for Simmons, but Lady Bison almost cleared off there with Mantle, but out of play again. So the Lady Warriors walk it up this near sideline. Up ahead for Wolfenden trying to turn here out of trouble, but a double team came in, dealt with the danger. Lady Bison trying to spring the attack again, but could not there as Warren trying to get it out for Yehida Aguayo and able to hold off a defender. And now it's Hunt bearing down on goal, but just stepping across there with the Lady Bison. But Hunt going to go track it down now, get it up top for Yehida Aguayo. Spins past her, able to win it, though. Now Simmons almost had it taken back with the Lady Bison, able to clear it here to the near side. And then... That was Warren leaning in, and it's going to be kind of an advantage play here as Simmons trying to 
take it back away for the Lady Warriors and uses the strength here to hold off the defender in the midfield and trying to get it away and does for Yehida Aguayo. And then Aguayo going to give a ball for Wolfen to chase after. Kira can't quite come down with it, but the Lady Bison have to play it out across the touchline and out of play as we head towards the final five minutes here. Again, quick post-game show after we're hoping to have a talk with head coach Jesus Davila after this game uh, as well. Try to uh, preview the Warriors contest against the Torrington Trailblazers. Ball going to come in now for Yehida Guayo. Steps through towards the top of the 18 across the danger area there. Hunt was lurking, but just a little bit outside of her reach there as the Lady Warriors were trying to find number four. Lady Bison changes now. Ball half out of the back here, but then a hot shot by the Lady Bison here. Going to be a throw in now for the Lady Warriors. Yehida Guao trying to go across now for Hunt. Brings it down on a soft touch here. Moves off to her left side. Going to try to dip, dribble past some defenders and does. Rips it across the left foot. Couldn't quite uh, get that on goal. Good defending by the Lady Bison. And now a chance for the Lady Bison to run out with it. Little even break here, developing a little four on four as Irish bearing down. Trying to go through the middle here. Sagetti going to come out and take that. Took control. Good read by Sagetti as she'll go out now looking for Simmons. Bouncing down. Lady Warriors have a chance to take it inside with Simmons and do. Taylor turns. He's a lot of space for herself. And then going to go try to go for Hunt, but. Nice deflection there by the Lady Bison to able to get it out of the danger area. Now Hoffman, good job to hold off the uh, Lady Bison there as it's near midfield. Nice interception by Espinosa and then lifts it into the air towards midfield. Lady Bison trying to string a couple of passes together. Irish going for a quick one touch there, but goes across the uh, far touch line. So the Lady Bison have a throw in. Ball comes in now, a hot shot from way outside, but Sagetti was ready for it and catches it confidently as then she launches it across the middle of the field. Chance for Yehida Gua to get on it. It was Spinning awkwardly, though, and the Lady Bison took it away momentarily, but the ball's still bouncing around. Yaida Guao trying to get it for Emma Hunt, but just coming forward now for the Lady Bison, but Yaida going to come back and use that strength to take it back for the Lady Warriors, but a little bit of a heavy touch there. Let's the Lady Bison come forward. Now to the outside and just unable to reach out a leg for that one. 2.05 left in this one. Lady Warriors for the throw-in. Carmona now for Warren. Into the midfield comes Taylor Simmons. Going to give it off for Yehida Aguayo. Now drops it off for Warren. Looks at the options. Going to go ahead for Simmons. Spins to the outside. Going to look now. Just holds it up along the touch line. Trying to go back now for Lundgren on the ground. Looking for Carmona. Intercepted by the Lady Bison. A chance for Espinosa to clear it and does so well. Woofenden in the area, but the Lady Bison do a nice job to step in front of that one. Again, we just have 90 seconds left in this game. So Lady Bison trying to find maybe at least a consolation goal late on here as Espinosa sends it across the far touchline on a clearance. Lady Bison throw in, intercepted by Hoffman. Now comes to the middle for Aguayo, drops it back off. Into the middle it comes for Simmons. And now the Lady Warriors trying to just launch one ahead. Now Simmons a chance to get on this one with some good strength. And now it's going to be a chance for Hunt to sprint on to this one, but good defending there by the Lady Bison. Inside the final minute here, Lady Warriors on the precipice of a 2024 Pinnacle Cup championship here, leading 3-0 Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. As this one will bounce across, awkward ball to deal with. Wolfenden trying to get on to it, spreads it out for Hunt. Looking to go to the inside. A little soft touch to the inside. Now switches direction. Inviting some pressure. And now steps inside of it. 
Trying to cross over, trying to keep it in play, but it went out for a goal kick. Final 25 seconds. It was a nice dance on the outside, but couldn't uh, ever get that entry pass in there for the Lady Warriors to attack. Lady Bison will come up the uh, far side here. Warren stepping through, able to chip it away, and now Yehida Guao going to go to the inside chance for Wolfenden. little touch here now. Simmons up ahead, just a heavy touch there. Comes forward. Final three seconds, going to... Tick by here as the Lady Warriors are going to be crowned champions. The 2022 Pinnacle Cup here as the Lady Warriors are victorious. 3-0 on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard over the Buffalo Lady Bison. Post-game show comes your way next as the Warriors and Trailblazers set for boys varsity soccer action, the Pinnacle Cup championship. But right now, you're looking down at your Lady Warrior champions here in 2024 post game next this is Worland Lady Warriors soccer on the McKamey Broadcasting Network Worland King's Carpet One has become a trusted destination for homeowners and a valued member of the community discover our exciting new showroom room by room designed to elevate your shopping experience a family owned business that's also a good neighbor King's Carpet One supports many charities in Worland and throughout the Bighorn Basin King's Carpet One giving our best to our customers and our community. Sally's Classic Pizza in Worland, the classiest pizza around. Sally's offers pizza made with fresh dough daily. Go with a classic single topping or load it up with the king. Ten toppings in all. Friday, football and pizza is a winning combination. The Warrior Special is available all school year. Get a large two-topping pizza and a two-liter for just $16.98. Fridays only. Sally's Classic Pizza, 1214 Bighorn Avenue or call 347-2453. Swing Trucking is a family-owned and operated company in Worland, Wyoming, offering trucking services for a host of industries. They have done extensive work in Wyoming, Montana, North Dakota, and Colorado, as well as surrounding Rocky Mountain states for the past 70 years. Their modern and up-to-date equipment allows them to provide full-service solutions for their customers' needs, from start to completion. Swing Trucking, 347-4161. Swing Trucking is a proud supporter of McKamey Broadcasting and Worland High School Athletics. And we'll go back here to Warrior Stadium into our post-pregame combo pregame show presented by McGarvin and Taylor Real Estate, WorlandWIO.com, 307-347-4271. Lady Warriors victorious 3-0 in the 2024 Pinnacle Cup goals by Nayeli Aguayo, Rivers Carroll, and an own goal from the Buffalo Lady Bison. The uh, difference in this one, Lady Warriors stay clean in this uh championship game as they uh, take away the victory and they only allowed one goal across their uh, three contests uh, scoring 17 of them across the uh, three games so after a scoreless open to the uh, season's first two games the uh, goals came in heavy numbers here in the uh, 2024 Pinnacle Cup as they get the uh, victory of the Buffalo Lady Bison 3 to nothing. We'll hope to talk with the uh, head coach in charge, uh, Jesus Davila. Might be able to get him here before the boys' game kicks off, but possibly on the uh, boys' halftime show as we're just about 10 minutes from the opener of this one between the Orland Warriors and the Torrington Trailblazers. Both teams into their uh, warm-ups before this championship game. Warriors in there. Home orange, white numbers, trailblazers in their way, whites, maroon numbers. Torrington across the front for the Blazers and Whirling across the front for your Warriors. So should be a good contest. The Warriors coming off a 2-0 victory over the uh, Buffalo Bison in that one. And then the Torrington Trailblazers win in a... Exciting sudden death shootout, 7-6 to six over Green River. A late penalty in that one for uh, Torrington. Gave them a chance to get into the shootout, and then they didn't spoil their chance as they took out the Green River Wolves, 7-6 to six in the penalty shootout. So both these teams playing to play for. It's a Pinnacle Cup championship game. Warriors on their home turf here at Warriors Stadium. The Blazers trying to play spoiler here in this one and come up with an upset victory over the Warriors here in the 2024 edition of the Pinnacle Cup. We'll see who takes this away. Will it be the Warriors or the Trail Blazers? Find out next here on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. McGarvin and Taylor pregame show continues next. 
wish I was a little bit smaller. A mini shack baller. I wouldn't have to yell when I talk to a toddler. I wish I had more leg room on a plane or a train. Life is tough when you're taller. Yeah, I shop it big and tall. But when it comes to my Pepsi, I like to keep it nice and small. A soft drink for your pocket. So light and refreshing, one sip, don't knock it. So the next time you have to check out line, grab some Pepsi minis, but get your own. Because these are all mine, mine, mine. Asco Industrial Supply is known for their industrial hoses, steel products, and trailers, but they'll surprise you with products for every customer. Check out Lazy One Clothing, matching pajamas, and more. Kill Tech Jackets for kids and adults, ready to protect you from old man winter. Stay cozy and stylish with Trail Crest Blankets. Stuck? Not a chance with Yankum Kinetic Ropes for every size ride. Give Hasco Industrial Supply a call at 347-6158 or stop in at 415 Bighorn Avenue in Merlin. The Warrior Supporter Shield. Join the War Party. Thank you to the following War Party members. Jay's Detail, 1626 U.S. Highway 20, 347-2071. Bryant Honey, Pure Wyoming Honey and Pollination Services. Sage Creek Land and Cattle Company. Bighorn Federal Savings Bank, 1006 Bighorn Avenue, 347-6196. Want to join the War Party? Call 307-431-1468 or email mckamiebroadcasting at gmail.com. And welcome back inside the McGarvin and Taylor pregame show. Putting on the headset now is Worland Lady Warrior head coach, Jesus Dyla. Coach, congratulations on the 2024 Pinnacle Cup victory. Coming away there with a 3-0 victory over the Buffalo Lady Bison. A productive weekend for your Lady Warriors. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, we're excited. I think uh, this is just a good sign of the growth that we've made in the short little three weeks that we've had. And I'm... Um, uh, very happy about the improvements that we made. Um, it definitely leaves a good taste in your mouth, of course. And, and, but at the end of the day, that's just the first three weeks. Uh, we have a long way to go. Uh, we have a long road ahead of us. And uh, we just got to keep building on that. Well, and Coach, uh, again, you came into this tournament having, haven't yet scoring a goal. And then in this one, you put 17 in. You only surrender one goal. So it feels like, even though it is early, only those three weeks, that those non-negotiables, especially on the defensive side, are really uh, really being taken to heart by these Lady Warriors. Yeah, no, I, I've had, you know, a great – I have a great group of girls, you know, that they're coachable, they – have a desire to win, and, um, and they know that it's going to take those non-negotiables. Our, our defense has to come first. That has to be the foundation of everything we do, the physicality, all of that, the intensity, and, um, you know, we got to see that, quite a bit of that today. Well, and, Coach, again, you talked about being the best condition team or intended to be the best condition mm -hmm. team, but feel like adding strongest team might be to that. Those two goals, uh, the first by Nile Aguirre on the 16th and then Rivers Carroll mm -hmm. on the 18th. Yeah. If they didn't play strong at the end of those, neither of those goals happened. They just outworked their defender both yeah. uh, both with skill and physicality. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I think for them, you know, when they have an opportunity to score, it's just like they forget about how tired they are. And their lights or their eyes just light up and, and they don't think about anything. So um, we have great speed. Uh, on the wings, we have great speed, too, with Nayeli um, to get some balls in behind. And, um, no, I, I, I was really pleased to see that. I always say speed kills. And so <laughs> in this one, uh, also just just curious from, I guess, my perspective, kind of seeing a, you know, a couple of different looks from uh, both of your goalkeepers in this tournament. Is it still kind of an active competition happening <laughs> between those two throughout this point? Which, I mean, I know leads to, you know, maybe the best play out there, but just kind of a, a curious thought for me. Yeah, no, I mean – uh, I never want any of the girls to get complacent. You know, I think uh, soon here we have to make that tough decision. It's always tough to do that. Um, but, um, you know, we want the girls to challenge each other every day and never to feel secure, you know, that this is my spot. You know, if you lack, there's always somebody pushing behind, you know, ready to step up whenever needed. 
and coach again, 2024 Pinnacle Cup champions. Any final thoughts on it here? Any comments on the girls or anything looking forward here as we uh, let you go towards the celebration before <laughs> looking ahead to the rest of the 2024 campaign? Yeah, I was talking to the girls, and I said, look, yeah, this is a great rehearsal for what we see at State, you know, where you play one game after another after another. And at that time, you know, it doesn't matter how tired you are. It doesn't matter how hurt you are. It's either you have the price in mind and you're going to let, you know, and you just can't let those those things, um, you know, affect you or anything like that. It doesn't matter what your body is telling you. You just got to keep mentally focused, mentally strong, and keep pushing forward and persevering. So I'm really happy uh, with what they were able to do today. They were tired. They were, you know, they had some aches and pains. And ultimately, um, you know, they got the job done. And that's that's all we can ask the girls to do. We're the Lady Warrior head coach, Jesus Tyler. Coach, congratulations again. Go enjoy it as uh, we'll have a little bit of a lull in the season with spring break, but uh, going to be right back at it pretty quickly. So congratulations again, and thanks for taking the time. Absolutely. Thank you, Jordan. Appreciate it. Head coach, Jesus Tyler there on the McGarvin and Taylor pregame show. Take a quick break on the other side, get you quick keys of the game, and then into our Northern Wyoming News. Starting lineups and opening kickoff here on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. Engines letting you down? Need a fix that's top notch, fast, and reliable? DPS is your go to destination. We are fueled by excellence and driven by expertise. From trucks to trailers, no job's too tough for our skilled crew. We've got the latest technology to get your diesel roaring again. Choose DPS where you decide and we provide. Stop in at 1051 North 10th Street in Worland. Call us 347 4410 or visit us on the web at dps307.com. Here in Wyoming, we live by the spirit of the Wild West. Now where the sun's a little brighter, where the snows that fall are a trifle wider, where the bonds of home are a wee bit tighter, that's where the West begins. We're the bank that's with you wherever that spirit leads, because we're more than a bank in Wyoming. We're Wyoming in a bank. Pinnacle Bank, the way banking should be. McGarvin Moberly Construction, a Whirlin institution, is celebrating 60 years in business. McGarvin Moberly is a specialized construction company with a focus on highway rehabilitation, maintenance, and reconstruction. For as many years as they've been in business, they've supported Whirlin High School Athletics, and that tradition continues with the support of McKamey Broadcasting. McGarvin Moberly wishes good luck and success to all Whirlin Warrior and Lady Warrior teams this season. McGarvin Moberly, 60 years and counting. Go Warriors! Welcome back inside the McGarvin and Taylor pregame show. Here on the McKamey Broadcasting Network, our McGarvin and Taylor pregame show wraps up here. So, again, thank you to McGarvin and Taylor Real Estate. WorlandWIO.com, 307-347-4271 to get a hold of one of their talented real estate agents for any of your housing or land needs here in the Bighorn Basin. So, thank you to McGarvin and Taylor Real Estate. Northern Wyoming News starting lineups here coming your way now as we'll get into those starting lineups on the McKamey Broadcasting Network, Northern Wyoming News. Weekly publications on Thursdays in print, online subscriptions, classifieds weekly as well. You can find our McKamey Broadcasting QR code each and every Thursday in the sports section. Hover your phone over that, click on the link that pops up, and that'll take you to our McKamey Broadcasting homepage. Again, Northern Wyoming News starting lineups. They're going to look like this. We'll start with the visitors, the Torrington Trailblazers. They're going to start this way. It'll be number two, Jay Schlegel. Number three is Adam Bartlett. Number five, Leo Belly. Number seven is Anthony Arnish. Number 10 is Bo Schimmick. Number 11, Grayson Shields. Number 12, Carter Blevins. Number 13 is Elijah Hatch. Number 14, Skylar Thomas. The uh, keeper is Aiden Schimmick. And number 24, Caden Riggs out there for the Torrington Trailblazers. For your Whirlin' Warriors, things don't change as we'll uh, go into our Whirlin' Warrior uh, starting lineup. Things won't change as mentioned. It's going to be number two, Caden Scheibel. Number three is Fisher Martinez. Number four is Cooper Cannon. Six is Mason Decker. Seven, Colt Weber. Eight is Roman Para. 
Nine, Brody Teal. Ten, Drew Schneider. Thirteen is Tyshawn Swalstead. Number 22, Owen Page. And the goalkeeper in the goal is number 99, Brian Caballero. Our PA man, AD. Aaron Abel going to introduce these teams at midfield. So we're going to take our last break here as we'll head to our Northern Wyoming News. Opening kickoff next. Pinnacle Cup Championship Soccer Boys Edition 2024 here from Warrior Stadium. Warriors, Trailblazers, next on the McKinney Broadcasting Network. In Worland offers roofing services, home renovation, and new home construction. Free estimates, plus they handle all insurance claims for a stress-free, streamlined process. Asphalt shingles, rubber roofs, TPO, and metal roofing. Bids for commercial or residential. Housing remodels, new construction, sidings, windows, concrete, and more. Stellar Roofing and Construction has the expertise and experience to get it done right. Stellar Roofing and Construction, 347-3289, or stop in at 1115 Bighorn Avenue in Worland. In its 24 years in Worland, King's Carpet One has become a trusted destination for homeowners and a valued member of the community. Discover our exciting new showroom, Room by Room, designed to elevate your shopping experience. A family-owned business that's also a good neighbor, King's Carpet One supports many charities in Worland and throughout the Bighorn Basin. King's Carpet One, giving our best to our customers and our community. Sally's Classic Pizza in Worland, the classiest pizza around. Sally's offers pizza made with fresh dough daily. Go with a classic single topping or load it up with the king. Ten toppings in all. Friday, football and pizza is a winning combination. The Warrior Special is available all school year. Get a large two-topping pizza and a two-liter for just $16.98. Fridays only. Sally's Classic Pizza, 1214 Bighorn Avenue or call 347-2453. Swing Trucking is a family-owned and operated company in Worland, Wyoming, offering trucking services for a host of industries. They have done extensive work in Wyoming, Montana, North Dakota, and Colorado, as well as surrounding Rocky Mountain states for the past 70 years. Their modern and up-to-date equipment allows them to provide full-service solutions for their customers' needs, from start to completion. Swing Trucking, 347-4161. Swing Trucking is a proud supporter of McKamey Broadcasting and Worland High School Athletics. And welcome back here inside the booth at Warrior Stadium as PA Man AD Aaron Abel just about to be finish out the uh, introductions here. So one change to the uh, to the uh, Warrior starting lineup. It'll be uh, Ryan Denise in there in this one instead of uh, Caden Scheibel. So we'll see Ryan Denise number fourteen come into the starting lineup for your Worland Warriors in their oh, uh, home oranges, white numbers, Torrington in their away, whites, purple numbers, purple shorts out there for the Trailblazers. Our Northern Wyoming News opening kickoff got up here in just moments, 30 minutes up on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. As we are ready for championship soccer action, Warriors trying to paint the Pinnacle Cup orange and black with a victory after the Lady Warriors captured the championship just minutes ago. The Warriors going to try to follow up here in victorious fashion against the Trailblazers, who are riding high after a sudden death shootout victory against Green River. We will see who will hoist the championship in 2024 with 60 minutes of soccer to side it, potentially a shootout and sudden death shootout possible here between these two squads. Warriors going to try to make sure they don't head towards that shootout. They want to take take care of business here in regulation. Our ARs, assistant referees, getting into position here. Fourth official on the sideline handling, handling substitutions and our head official out on the field as the uh, players are ready here. Our referees now getting into position Goalkeeper is also ready for action. And we're underway with the Northern Wyoming News opening kickoff. Thank you, Northern Wyoming News, for their continued sponsorship of McKamey Broadcasting. Denise, a touch here in the midfield for Schneider. He's going to turn, face some pressure, and the clock's got to get running here. <laughs> it's, uh, again, the clock not running at 30 minutes. Uh, got a... Got a couple of folks here on the job this weekend, but uh, takes a lot to uh, make a four-field, 18-team tournament come alive. 
Colt Weber running up this near sideline, going to keep it in play against his defender. And uh, going to be a near side throw in for the Warriors here. Mason Decker going to take it, going to try to get it in for Fisher Martinez. Heavy touch here back into the midfield. Owen Page going to try to track it down. Player is on side now for the Torrington Trailblazers. They're going to have a good chance now, but then scraping the shot there for the Trailblazers. Oh, just an unfortunate hit there that time for the Blazers. So it was number 14, Skylar Thomas, a golden opportunity here in the uh, opening moments of this one as the Warriors got caught defensively. So a first-minute opportunity goes wide for the Trailblazers. Out of the goal by Caballero, headed forward. Decker lets this one bounce. Touched into the midfield now. Controlled now by Arnish. Back for Arnish, a little exchange. Tyshawn Swalstead trying to take it away. Using his pace to force Arnish to the outside. He'll spin past Swalstead, though, and now going to take on Decker. Head into the box here. Going to try to center it up, but he's going to earn his team a corner. So the Blazers... Very bold early on, going to bring nine or eight players forward, only two back near the midline. Arnish going to take the kick here. Highlighter green boots. Caballero going to be ready for this one to come in. Comes across the middle. Little header. It's going to be cleared off by the Warriors. Good defending. Trailblazers are going to keep it in play, try to recycle the pressure. But the Warriors able to take it away in the midfield, but... Torrington back onto it. Go to the outside, intercepted by Weber. And try to use his pace here and strength as Weber is going to go up the near sideline out of play across the touchline. Warrior throw. No, it's going to be a trailblazer throw, and they say last touch by Weber. Ball runs across one blazer. So that's Adam Bartlett running ahead, but Page able to intervene, and now Fisher Martinez is going to give for Schneider. Schneider going to try to get that one through, but it's intercepted. Now Swalstead hung on to it just a moment too long as Denise will turn in the midfield as Martinez gets this one back away from his defender, and he's chopped down on that far sideline, so a free kick in the attacking half for the Warriors. Mason Decker will be the one to send it forward. Decker launches it ahead, going to look for Weber. Ball is chested down by the Blazers. Swalstead takes it, uses the pace to beat his man momentarily. Spinning awkwardly, unable to earn the corner just yet, and the Blazers able to keep it in play here. Going to come across the top of the 18. Touched here to the outside, and now back inside, but... Owen Page is there just to chip it away from Arnish, but he gets back on top of it. Goes for a long through ball, but it's flicked away by Roman Para for a Torrington throw-in. Caden Riggs throws it up the field there. Decker let that one run past him, and now the Warriors clear it off with Teal. So the Blazers able to run it up this uh, near sideline for another throw-in. Long throw now and headed away by Weber. So Torrington inching forward on the throw-ins. Four minutes into this game, into the fifth minute officially. Arnish over the head kick here to center it up. Now Warriors can't quite get it clear. Martinez trying to do the job, but it's recycled out. Martinez almost took it away and now does. Turns against pressure. Going to find Tyshawn Swalstead. Now give it for Weber to chase on to. Weber going to keep this one in play. Trying to step inside his man and does. Colt Weber into the middle now for Schneider. Left it back. Swalstead's going to bring it down. Ball bouncing around. Schneider on the deck. Took a hard hit. See if the referee brings it to a stop here. Schneider's finally possibly up onto the knees here and finally going to be stopped. As the referee will come and talk with Schneider momentarily, I think he just, not sure if he took a kick or if he got the ball there, didn't quite see what happened. A lot of bodies in the same area, so referee happy with it and ready to continue. So Denise. 
to have it on the drop here from the referee. Just chips it ahead for Schneider. Going to come through the middle towards the keeper and almost spilled there by Schimmick. Able to get it on the second collection there. Quickly out of the goal now as Page tries to stick out a leg. Couldn't. And Para forward to send it back ahead. Header won by the Blazers. And now Denise going to go to the outside. Going to take it past one. Set up a second. Denise. Back now for Page. Inside for Swalstead. Drags it along, trying to go through two defenders. And now it's back for Schneider. Golden chance for the Warriors. Denied by Schimmick. Ball still loose in the box. Swalstead another chance. Bounces the outside. Across the goal here. Blocked on a sliding challenge by the Blazers as they scramble defend in the end. And it does come out of play for a Warrior throw in. Schneider a great chance early. Good defending by the Blazers, though. Seventh minute, throw in now, looking for Warriors in the middle. It's going to be cleared off by Riggs. And now the Warriors, though, going to get it back in the midfield as Page tries to take it across Arnish, and Arnish going to win it in the midfield, and he's got a man running again, but a heavy touch to the outside sends Skyler Thomas to the far sideline. Now going to send it across here. Caballero going to come up with the catch. It was wide of his goal, but just wanted to secure it, make sure it wasn't going towards the uh, top corner there. Sends it high into the air now. Going to take a bounce, and it's going to bounce really high into the air. Riggs, a header forward, down by the Blazers. Get it to the outside. Good control here by Torrington. Trying to go across the middle as Page hooks out a leg and then gets it for Swalstead, but a man jumps in front of Tyshawn there, but works it back and tries to go between the legs there and Still running with it, Swalstead. He's going to get it up ahead now for Weber, but Riggs is there, spinning away from Fisher Martinez. Ball comes back to the midfield. Now for the Warriors, going to get it forward for Schneider to chase, but nothing there. That was Cooper Cannon sending it forward. Seven and a half minutes into this one here. We're in the eighth minute, 22-22 left in this first half, awaiting our first goal. Riggs going to send it out of the area. Page tried to head it forward, but spins off the side and goes to the outside, and then Teal touches it down. Para with the half clearance. Denise tried to let that one run through. It's taken back, and now kind of loose in the midfield. Going to come back, though, for Fisher Martinez. Into the middle for Tyshawn Swalstead. Heavy touch there. Comes back down to the feet of Leo Belly. Now for Elijah Hatch. Bartlett. Outside now, good pass there as the Blazers try to go up the sideline. Good intervention by Cannon. As the ball is launched ahead, it's going to go all the way back now for the keeper, Shimmick. Ball rolled out of the back now as Schneider's going to try to put some pressure on. Ball comes quickly up the sideline, touch into the middle here. Page puts it on the deck now. Swalstead going to spin away from trouble. Chance for Weber to run. And... Here's Swalstead, touch to the outside. Tyshawn running towards the 18. Now he's going to have a chance to cross it into the danger area and dealt with by the Blazers, but the Warriors are going to have their first set piece of the day. Changes coming in. Mascaro and Scheibel off the bench. Martinez is going to come out. Also coming off is Drew Schneider. So Ryan Denise is going to take this corner kick here from the near side. Swing it in from the right to the left. Take it in here, high in the air. Teal's in the area. Mascaro's in the area. Ball's dug out by the Blazer defense. It's kind of in no man's land now as Swalstead trying to get it off for Page. Slipped it past one, then slips it outside here for the Warriors. And then a heavy collision on the outside. 50-50 ball. Torrington a chance to run here. Ball comes back in the middle for Arnish. And he'll take on the Warrior defense. Going to go right to the middle of the field. Steps through. Shot there. Gobbled up by Caballero. As the Blazers had their chance. And a great throw out by Caballero. Going to find it for Weber. Now back for Swalstead. Steps past one man, but it's intercepted. And then a little shoulder to shoulder. And that's going to be a foul against Adam Bartlett. 
So Decker now going to be the man to send it forward. Sends it up ahead, looking for Mascaro, headed back into the midfield there. Page, heavy touch taken away by the Trailblazers. And then an intervention lands favorably for Torrington as Teal is able to deal with that pressure. Then Para kind of let it run across his body. And now a chance for the Blazers to run ahead with Arnish on the outside. And he's taken down just outside of the box. So a dangerous free kick now for the Blazers. Right side of the 18. Arnish is near it along with Skylar Thomas. Warriors wall backed up about 10 yards. So a 12th minute chance here for the Blazers. Caballero got to be ready for a shot or a cross. Referee's ready. Ball comes into the middle here. Caballero grabs it confidently and looks for options. But he's just going to lift it into the air to the outside. It's going to bounce now for the Warriors to chase after, and the Blazers just have to play it out across the uh, far touch line there. Throw for Cannon. Going to come in for Mascaro. Tried to spin it to the outside, and he's chopped down there. Warriors... Not going to get a free kick, though. Man, that looked like Mascaro was chopped down. A fairly tough challenge as Denise going to go inside out. little give and go with Denise. Back out now for the Warriors for Scheibel. Turns it inside, and he's taken down right there, and that's going to be a free kick. And the question is, was it inside the box? That's the question. And the uh, Warriors look like they're going to have a free kick just outside the penalty area. Wait, hold on. Are they going to administer a penalty? They will. It's a penalty for the Warriors as Scheibel was taken down inside of the box and Tyshawn Swalstead comes forward to take it. 13th minute here, best chance of the Warriors as the referee going to go talk to Shimmick about what he can and can't do. So, again, uh, Shimmick had the uh, shoe untied there and the referee offering a little help. So, we'll head inside the 14th minute before the Warriors take this one on. And uh feel like Swalstead getting a little ice job from the uh, head official out there, but want to make sure the uh, shoes are tied properly. So, Swalstead put away a penalty once in this tournament. See if he can strike twice as the Warriors look to go up one nothing here in the opening half. Penalty earned by Caden Scheibel on the outside of the 18. Swalstead staring at the laces. Strides forward. Right foot to it. Finishes. Goal! Tyshawn Swalstead. Penalty converted. Ice water in the veins. Two for two on penalties this season is Tyshawn Swalstead as the Warriors take a one nothing lead here on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. So Swalstead, a 14th minute goal, and the Warriors are on top. one nothing here in this Pinnacle Cup championship. Kickoff here taken by Arnish and the Blazers. Just going to be sent well forward here, and Caballero brings that down on an easy catch. Not sure if they're just trying to see if Caballero is off his line. But the Warriors will take that easy save as Caballero uses the big boot to send it forward. Blazers, header there, goes to the outside. Scheibel and Denise in the area. Ball just flicked on here. Scheibel might have a chance at it. Blazers knife it back into play. Header towards the middle. Mascaro is there. Won the first ball. And then the Blazers able to take it away. Good defending there by Bartlett, but Mascaro's got it now. And Denise will look to the outside. Going to try to get it there for Scheibel, but it's intercepted by the Blazers. Now the ball comes up ahead. 
Bartlett. And a yellow card for Denise. Didn't quite see what happened there. So Denise picks up a yellow card. Not sure what the uh, offense was. Didn't see any challenges or anything. Could have been a couple for intentional handballs and a few other things out there. Could have been something like that. Could have been something verbal as well, but... We're just speculating here, so Warriors going to go on the defensive side as the Blazers have a free kick just inside the defensive half. Going to be taken here by Riggs. Ball comes into the 18. Caballero comes out and another confident grab from the junior goalkeeper. We'll say it's something the Warriors have had a continuing tradition of is quality goalkeepers. And this one's going to bounce awkwardly here. Chancellor and Ascaro to run onto it. Now it's down for Scheibel. Scheibel will look at it. Thought about taking a shot on, but then it's finally taken back away by Caden Riggs. Now it's a foot race, and Riggs with a push off there. And that's going to be a foul on Riggs as Swalstead, again, Swalstead, much like a pesky housefly, seems to never go away. Always hassling, always working back as Decker sends this one in. High launch towards the 18. Blazers win the header. It'll be a throw in across the far touchline for the Warriors as Cannon will come to the sideline to take it. All 10 Warriors in the offensive half. Ball comes across top of the 18. Schneider's there. Ball's still loose. Trailblazers is able to turn it away down to the feet of Thomas. Then it's intercepted by Page. He'll step through one. Get it now for Mascaro. And Riggs comes through just to do enough defending to turn the Warriors away here for a near touchline throw in. And now Weber. Going to bring that down. He's going to step inside of Riggs here. Just ran out of room, but Swalstead has it. It's a 50-50 chance here as Weber takes it back away. Schneider turns to the midfield, and now they're going to bring it to the outside for Scheibel. Scheibel chips it across looking for Swalstead. Nothing there just yet. Page resets, trying to find Mascaro, and Riggs finally able to clear this one away with Decker slicing it. And now Cooper Cannon up ahead, going to run all the way here for Weber. Now going to come ahead Mascaro, but he tried to let that one come to him and Good defensive step in there by the uh, Warriors, and now ball looking to come ahead. And again, I think some of those, maybe if you're hearing those whistles in the uh, background, it's it's over from the uh, middle school field. So both the Warriors and Trailblazers are going to have to be wary of uh, exactly where those whistles are coming from as the Blazers make a change. Ball in for Arnish. Take on a couple of Warriors out there. Steps on it. Tries to take on Cannon to the end line here. Then able to center it up. And the Warriors, Caballero able to take it right off the feet of Elijah Hatch. Good goalkeeping there because that was a great chance created by Arnish. And Caballero to the rescue again to salvage the Warriors' one nothing lead. This one way up the field. Another high bounce here. Mascaro comes down onto it and then played out by Riggs. It'll be another set-piece corner for the Warriors. Looks like Scheibel's going to take it from the uh, far side corner. Going to raise the hand. Referee and players ready. Warriors stack the six-yard box. Come out. Page almost got ahead to it. Now it's going to be Weber to track this one down just across the sideline. Decker hooks it towards the danger area, but it's intercepted by the Blazers. Chance to set up the counterattack now. Warriors, though, take it back with Page in the midfield. Going to come here to the outside now for Weber. Weber steps in, going to go past one defender. Now past two, heavy touch there, but only to come as far as Swalstead on the outside. Now steps in his man through the wickets, but into the second defender is Leo Belly. Belly up ahead now for Bartlett, who just got it through the challenge of Schneider. And now another long play here as the Warriors going to Hit it away with Caballero slicing it. And now great control there by Swalstead. Steps inside of his defender. And now Swalstead going downhill. Holds up on it. Almost lost possession, but gets it back. 
Now Decker going to look for options. Going to send it up ahead looking for Mascaro. Header one there by Shields, but only as far as Scheibel. Schneider now inside going to look for Mascaro. Back for Schneider. Takes on a rip shot there. Bounces awkwardly, but Schimmick up to the task as he comes away with the save. And Schimmick high into the air here towards the near side touchline. A little bit too much on that one. Going to go out of play. Denise is going to come back in along with Fisher Martinez as Cooper Cannon going to get a break as well as Colt Weber. Mason Decker with it now. Long throw in, going to look for Martinez, gets ahead to it and comes to the middle for Page. Now it's down for Schneider. Get it outside, Scheibel, trying to go to the middle looking for Swalstead. Ball's finally cleared off there. I think it's going to have a little too much pace on it. It's going to go out of play for a Warrior throw in. Looking to get it up for Scheibel. It's going to bounce awkwardly here as Schneider has it. Heavy touch, heavy challenge there. They're going to think they're going to give a... Free kick, they will, as Schneider was taken down on an aggressive challenge. So the Warriors going to have a free kick here, see where they say that it's going to take place from about well, 35 yards out on the left wing. Be taken quickly and trying to go across and got down to Mascaro's head, but he couldn't direct it back towards goal. It was a good free kick taken out there. I think it was Swalstead that sent that one in. Goal kick taken, short variety. Now the Warriors trying to latch back onto it. Bartlett's got to do a little bit defending, and now Shields, or Bo Schimmick, trying to defend. Now Schneider going to step through one defender, get it down for Mascaro, left it back for Schneider. Schneider steps in. Heavy challenge again, but it was a it was a fair one. It was hard challenge, but it was fair as Swalset will come back towards this near touch line and get the team a free kick, and Schneider's back down on the deck here and going to take a – Quick stoppage. Is it, again, it was a heavy challenge from Bartlett. Don't think there was any ill intent with it, so the uh, clock going to stop here. We're going to take a quick commercial break back after this on the McKinney Broadcasting Network. A little, a little bit smaller. I'm in shack baller. I wouldn't have to yell when I talk to a toddler. I wish I had more leg room on a plane or a train. Life is tough when you're taller. Yeah, I shop it big and tall. But when it comes to my Pepsi, I like to keep it nice and small. A soft drink for your pocket. So light and refreshing, one sip, don't knock it. So the next time you have to check out line, grab some Pepsi minis, but get your own. Because these are all mine, mine, mine. Schneider comes off to the sideline under his own power, so that's good. Then head assistant head coach Zach Lemka just wanted to have a couple of conversations with the uh, referee there just about the about the challenge. It was a heavy challenge, but I do think Bartlett won the ball. It was just one of those that won the ball and then a coming together. So a throw in taken by Decker. Going to look for Martinez. That one spins towards the corner. Martinez launches it into the box. A little bit of danger here. Now a chance to slot it away. Goal, Warriors! Cooper Cannon! With the finish, 2 nothing Warriors, Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. Schimmick couldn't make a decision to take that little spill of the ball for the Warriors. Lands favorably and slotted away by Cannon. 2 nothing Warriors, six and a half to go here in the first half. So a 24th-minute goal from Cooper Cannon. 
Gives the Warriors a double-up lead. Now the Blazers on it, trying to get it for Arnish. Warriors take it away, and Swalstead wants to dribble. Turns to the inside, needs a little bit of help. Now comes outside, good strength there from Swalstead. Then a little miss dribble that time around and turns it over to the Blazers. Now a chance to run for uh, both squads. Chance for the uh, Blazers to come forward. But it's turned away by the Warriors. A long clearance out of play. That one's going to head uh, over the fence and into the field back behind the stands. Long throw in looking for Arnish. Going to get there. Decker steps through, able to clear it back into the attacking half. And comes down for Elijah Hatch. Para tried to take it back from Arnish. Arnish, good touchdown, soft touch. He'll take on the knees, got through one defender there. Good fancy footwork, and now an awkward ball bounces through. Blazers a chance to latch back onto it. Runs out of play. I think it's going to be a Blazer throw in. It is ball thrown in now towards the 18. Get it back outside for Hatch across the end line and out of play. So goal kick coming. 4.45 left here in the first half. It was a Tyshawn Swalstead PK converted, then followed up by a Cooper Cannon goal. Ball rifles across the ground from Caballero, then Cannon left it in the middle for nobody. Arnish. Best player for the Blazers thus far, trying to free himself up and does an awkward bounce there for Caballero, but read nicely and collected. And now another launch from the boot of Caballero as Mascaro sent it on, and Shimmick smartly lets that one take its first large hop and collects it. Ball comes outside for Schlegel. Now quickly up the field it goes as Decker lets this one run in behind, then Hoist it ahead looking for Page, but Arnish steps in front. Now a chance to bear down on the Warrior defense, but takes on a longer speculative shot from outside the 18 and could not connect with it well enough to challenge the goal of Caballero. Chance for Decker to try to send a long ball forward. Now it's going to be down for Cannon. Steps through one defender. Can't get past the second. It's Riggs. Kind of a stone wall back there is Riggs. Gets it outside for Hatch. Now in the midfield, Scheibel tried to take it away. Couldn't take it off the feet of Bo Schimmick. Now the Blazers trying to send some forces ahead. And Arnish on to it again. Steps through a couple of defenders there. Warriors got to try to do something here late, and then he's taken down as Arnish and wins another dangerous free kick for the Blazers. couple of talented Blazers out there, but uh, especially, especially Arnish thus far as he's got a chance to have this Warrior lead with a proper hit. So Arnish set to take on this free kick. Just about ready to go back to play with just 2.15 left in the half. Here comes the shot now for Arnish and wide of the far post as Caballero had that corner covered up, you felt. Colt Weber back onto the field for Gunnar Mascaro. Two minutes to go here in the half. Warriors not in any kind of rush with a 2-0 lead. Again, goals from Swalstead and Cannon in the first half here have the Warriors in good position as Caballero sends it deep out of the box here as Riggs able to get a header to it, but Swalstead going to tap it over the top. Chance for Weber to run onto it into the box. Dangerous area. Bowled over there by Riggs and going to be is it another penalty. It is going to be another penalty for the Warriors there as Riggs' heavy challenge in the box against Weber was flagged. The referee going to get together here, talk about it. 
And looks like uh, looks like it will be a penalty. And not sure the uh, penalty actually maybe came from the other side as they actually tag Grayson Shields with the uh, yellow card. So I didn't see what was going on on the back side of that play. But apparently... Apparently it was... Uh, Maybe a challenge on the backside somewhere. Didn't didn't really see an eye on it. But either way, whether it was the foul by Riggs or the foul by Shields, it matters not as the Warriors are going to take another penalty. This one's going to be taken by Ryan Denise. So head coach Ron Overcast letting a couple of players take penalties here as the clock is going to start to run. 50 seconds to go in the half. Referee just reminds Shimmick of what he can, cannot do, as he uh, also instructs players have to stay outside of the 18. Here is Denise as he eyes the ball. Going to put the right foot to it, and it's saved there, but a second chance is put back away. Goal! Ryan Denise, he was denied on the first by Shimmick. Great save, but it bounces favorably for Denise, and he spins away, and team celebration as the Warriors make it three, and that's going to do it for the opening half here. The Blazers not going to have another chance to kick this one before the break. Warriors three, Blazers zero. Pinnacle Bank scoreboard halftime show comes your way next as the Warriors comfortably ahead here. Two penalties, one converted by Swalstead, the other by Denise, and then sandwich meat in the middle is Cooper Cannon, who slotted one away in the 24th minute. Warriors three, Blazers zero, Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. This is Whirlin Warriors soccer on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. Supply is known for their industrial hoses, steel products, and trailers, but they'll surprise you with products for every customer. Check out Lazy One Clothing, matching pajamas, and more. Kill Tech jackets for kids and adults, ready to protect you from old man winter. Stay cozy and stylish with trail press blankets. Stuck? Not a chance with Yankum Kinetic ropes for every size ride. Give Hasco Industrial Supply a call at 347-6158 or stop in at 415 Bighorn Avenue in Worland. The Warriors Supporter Shield. Join the War Party. Thank you to the following War Party members. Jay's Detail, 1626 U.S. Highway 20, 347-2071. Bryant Honey, Pure Wyoming Honey and Pollination Services. Sage Creek Land and Cattle Company. Bighorn Federal Savings Bank, 1006 Bighorn Avenue, 347-6196. Want to join the War Party? Call 307-431-1468 or email mckamiebroadcasting at gmail.com. Ladies and gentlemen, are your diesel engines letting you down? Need a fix that's top-notch, fast, and reliable? DPS is your go-to destination. We are fueled by excellence and driven by expertise. From trucks to trailers, no job's too tough for our skilled crew. We've got the latest technology to get your diesel roaring again. Choose DPS where you decide and we provide. Stop in at 1051 North 10th Street in Worland. Call us 347-4410 or visit us on the web at dps307.com. Here in Wyoming, we live by the spirit of the Wild West. Now where the sun's a little brighter, where the snows that fall are a trifle wider, where the bonds of home are a wee bit tighter, that's where the West begins. We're the bank that's with you wherever that spirit leads. Because we're more than a bank in Wyoming, we're Wyoming in a bank. Pinnacle Bank, the way banking should be. McGarvin Moberly Construction, a Whirlin institution, is celebrating 60 years in business. McGarvin Moberly is a specialized construction company with a focus on highway rehabilitation, maintenance, and reconstruction. For as many years as they've been in business, they've supported Whirlin High School Athletics, and that tradition continues with the support of McKamey Broadcasting. McGarvin Moberly wishes good luck and success to all Whirlin Warrior and Lady Warrior teams this season. McGarvin Moberly, 60 years and counting. Go Warriors! And welcome inside the halftime show. Halftime score, Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. Whirlin Warriors 3, 
Torrington Trailblazers 0, Warriors following in the footsteps of the Lady Warriors thus far. Lady Warriors led 3-0 at half, held on for that 3-0 victory over the Buffalo Lady Bison to, to grab the 2024 Pinnacle Cup. Warriors trying to make it a black and orange party uh, here in 2024 by finishing out the Blazers in half number two. Goals for the Warriors, two PKs, one by Tyshawn Swalstead in the 14th, the other by Ryan Anees in the 40th, and Cooper Cannon with a goal in the 24th. The difference thus far in this one, so the uh, Warriors in a comfortable position, but again, same story as the Lady Warriors the last time we talked about it. No reason to take your foot off the gas. Want to make sure to even stretch further out in this one. You don't want the Blazers to... All of a sudden, get an idea if they can get an early goal to think that there's a comeback uh, on tap here in this uh, Pinnacle Cup championship game. Again, there's been some confident goalkeeping out there by Brian Caballero in that first half. The The Blazers have had some chances, and I'll tell you the places where the chances have come from. And again, great player out there individually uh, is uh, number seven, Anthony Arnish. He's been bearing down on the Warrior defense, split through the back four a couple of times, earned a couple of free kicks in dangerous areas on the outside of the 18 and the top of the 18, unable to challenge Caballero's goal in the end, but did take some good Caballero uh, goalkeeping as Elijah Hatch had a real chance on one of the free kicks to... uh, to get a goal, but uh, the Warriors were able to stand tall and take that one, uh, take that away with Brian Caballero. So the Warriors sitting in good position thus far. And again, we talk with head coach Jesus Davila at the uh, start of this one on the McGarvin and Taylor pregame show. And he just mentioned that the, uh, the Lady Warriors, again, it's great to get that championship experience, but this is that first layer of a uh, of a long season trying to finish off what uh, what their goals are. And truly, this Lady Warriors squad haven't been there so often uh, in those state championship tournaments near the state championship or in the state championship game. It's been those pesky Cody Phillies that have uh, stood in the way a lot for the uh, Lady Warriors. So uh, that's going to be the goal here after the uh, Pinnacle Cup course. They're going to have a week off with spring break, so no games next weekend, and they're going to have games the following weekend as uh, the Warriors will head into conference play. As uh, they'll have a number of road trips, they'll go out to uh, out to Newcastle, Douglas, Torrington, a couple of long trips as well down to Rollins. So uh, a number of long trips for the uh, Warriors here in the 24 season. But right now they're focused on the final 30 minutes to try and get a victory here in the 2024 Pinnacle. Cup again leading 3 0 on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. That's going to wrap up our halftime show here on the uh, McKamey Broadcasting Network. On the other side, we'll uh, head into second half action as the Warriors try to finish off what they've started in the first half, leading at 3 0 on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. Second half, your way next in the 2024 Pinnacle Cup Championship game between the Warriors and the Trailblazers of Torrington High School. This is Whirlin' Warriors Soccer coming your way live on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. Construction in Worland offers roofing services, home renovation, and new home construction. Free estimates, plus they handle all insurance claims for a stress-free, streamlined process. Asphalt shingles, rubber roofs, TPO, and metal roofing. Bids for commercial or residential. Housing remodels, new construction, sidings, windows, concrete, and more. Stellar Roofing and Construction has the expertise and experience to get it done right. Stellar Roofing and Construction, 347-3289, or stop in at 1115 Bighorn Avenue in Worland. In its 24 years in Worland, King's Carpet One has become a trusted destination for homeowners and a valued member of the community. Discover our exciting new showroom, Room by Room, designed to elevate your shopping experience. A family-owned business that's also a good neighbor, King's Carpet One supports many charities in Worland and throughout the Bighorn Basin. King's Carpet One, giving our best to our customers and our community. Sally's Classic Pizza in Whirlin, the classiest pizza around. Sally's offers pizza made with fresh dough daily. Go with a classic single topping or load it up with the king. Ten toppings in all. Friday, football and pizza is a winning combination. The Warrior Special is available all school year. Get a large two-topping pizza and a two-liter for just $16.98. Fridays only. Sally's Classic Pizza, 1214 Bighorn Avenue or call 347-2453. Thank you. 
Swing Trucking is a family-owned and operated company in Whirlin, Wyoming, offering trucking services for a host of industries. They have done extensive work in Wyoming, Montana, North Dakota, and Colorado, as well as surrounding Rocky Mountain states for the past 70 years. Their modern and up-to-date equipment allows them to provide full-service solutions for their customers' needs, from start to completion. Swing Trucking, 347-4161. Swing Trucking is a proud supporter of McKamey Broadcasting and Whirlin High School Athletics. Smaller, a mini shack baller. I wouldn't have to yell when I talk to a toddler. I wish I had more leg room on a plane or a train. Life is tough when you're taller. Yeah, I shop it big and tall. But when it comes to my Pepsi, I like to keep it nice and small. A soft drink for your pocket. So light and refreshing, one sip, don't knock it. So the next time you have to check out line, grab some Pepsi minis, but get your own. Cause these are all mine, mine, mine. Welcome back inside the broadcast booth here. 2024 Pinnacle Cup Championship game. Warriors in control 3 to nothing at the halftime mark on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard, but still 30 minutes of soccer left for the Blazers to try to salvage something here. The Warriors going to look to put a couple of punches, land a couple of punches in this heavyweight fight here early on in the second half to uh, really secure their position. They look to win this Pinnacle Cup. They've had strong victories against uh, both Powell and Buffalo. They've outscored their opponents 5-1, to one, now 8-1 to one in this tournament thus far. 30 minutes up on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. So we're ready for the second half. Referees, goalkeepers, players are ready. It's our fourth official ready now, and we are ready for the second half here from Warrior Stadium as the Blazers have the opening possession. Try to spread it to the outside and get it quickly to the feet of Arnish. Have it here. Page trying to do the defending. Double team on the outside. Arnish has to drop it back now. Ball comes to the midfield. Warriors try to take over with Scheibel and Denise. Warriors having to do some defending here. Finally do hoist it away. Now the Blazers can't control it, so a throw in coming here for the uh, Warriors across the near sideline. Goal scorer Cooper Cannon going to throw this one in. Going to look to go long here. Martinez had that one kind of spin off his back. It's going to come down for him, though. Now to the midfield. Just couldn't quite get enough on it there to get it back for Tyshawn Swalstead. Now Arnish. Up the outside, going to try a through ball. Almost came all the way through as Caballero missed that one, kind of let it run past him, and Warriors just smartly played out across the touchline there. You don't see Caballero put too many uh, foots wrong out there from the goalkeeper position, but that one uh, could have been could have been disastrous for the Warriors, but nobody from Torrington was home. So now it'll be a uh, far touchline throw in. To be taken by Arnish. Long throw in comes in. Warriors win the header with Para. Then Swalstead, and then a chance to rip the shot, but scraped it off the outside of the foot. And the Warriors are going to have a goal kick here. So the Warriors leading 3 0 here in the 32nd minute as Caballero sends us. The right boot forward. Breeze blowing 
as Martinez had Weber on the outside, couldn't get that pass, but then takes it away. Good work here as Martinez is finally dispossessed, but Decker going to send it over the top for uh, for Weber to chase. There's Riggs, though, to deal with it. Back in the middle, only as far as Tyshawn Swall said. Now get it outside for Denise. Spins further towards the uh, touchline now. Tries to split the legs of a Touring to Devender does. Scheibel recycles it into the middle as Swalstead looks, touches it past the man. He's got a chance to rip one. Does from the outside. Schimmick just down to his near side, able to get the save. A little bit more on that one from Swalstead, and that one would have been in the back of the net early for the Warriors, but a good sh save by Schimmick. Header down by Teal, brought down by Arnish. Touch to the outside. Decker lifts it high into the air. All going to bounce. Riggs and Martinez battle, and that's going to be a foul there on Fisher-Martinez, so a free kick coming in the defensive half for the Blazers. So Riggs going to put a foot to it here with the uh, left foot, sends it forward. Denise almost intercepted that. Ball is loose, though, right in the middle of the field. Teal's finally able to... Do the rest of the job here as Martinez taps it over the top, but Schimmick's going to get out to grab this one. Like the idea from Fisher there, but couldn't complete that uh, second touch. Ball into the feet of Leo Belly. Dribbles past one, now two. Goes to the outside for Skyler Thomas. Now back inside. Warriors able to get a foot to it, and Tyshawn Swalstead going to Run and throw this to the outside. Chance for Scheibel to run at it, but not enough grass to keep that one in play. Throw in from Riggs. Coming now. Able to throw it in. Looking for Belly. Able to get ahead to it. Up ahead for Denise. Trying to get it for Scheibel. Heavy touch here. Scheibel able to hook it towards the top of the 18. But comes back out, Leo Belly will hook forward, now down for Arnish. Swalstead going to try to track him here as Arnish moves to the outside. Going to work against Swalstead, trying to take it out of play. Now Decker going to have to be careful with it. And sorry about the camera work there as Teal spreads it across the far touch line. All towards the top of the 18, header by Teal, second one by Page, and Martinez a chance to turn, going to try to send this up the field, sliding challenge by Belly as he got a good tackle that time around, and now Denise does a good job of clearing it away across the near touch line. 24-50 left in this one, 36-minute, Warriors leading 3-0. Ball headed forward by the Blazers, and now it's going to spin forward. Blazers a little bit of an awkward moment, but able to... Touch it ahead there was Bo Schimmick. Now for Thomas, back into the middle for Bartlett. Outside, going to try to get it back for Thomas. Has it there now. Thomas going to look to get in an entry pass here into a dangerous area, but right into the waiting hands of Caballero. Now he's going to throw it out for Colt Weber to chase after. He's got it now as Schimmick's going to try to Get through, and what a great ball here. Could be a chance now for Martinez. Holds things up. Going to get it back for Scheibel. Chance to set up the hard hit. Through the hands of Schimmick. Hit the crossbar, and then Schimmick's able to collect it there. Scheibel that close to a fourth goal as Schimmick just pushed it onto the crossbar. So the Warriors rattle the frame there. Now an awkward half clearance, and Schimmick, or excuse me, Arnish is taken down again, third time he's been fouled, third time he's earned a free kick in the attacking half here for the uh, Blazers. So Arnish to take here. Sends it ahead into the 18, and then Caballero is going to get beat on the header as the Blazers are offsides, though. Offside on the Blazers as they erase the goal. Referee just going to come to confirm with his AR there as it looked like the goal scorer, Elijah Hatch, started early, and the Warriors 
escape punishment as it remains 3-0 there. And again, not much Brian Caballero could do about that one. It really was a perfect header. But in the end, it's erased by an offside call here by the assistant referee. And now it's Fisher Martinez stepping in, trying to keep possession here and does. Good strength by Martinez. Warriors and Blazers battle at midfield. Swalstead now going to take it away and then try to get it up the field. Cannon, though, going to rocket one forward. Riggs dealt with it. Nice job by Page just to get a foot on it, then too much from Martinez. And a quick touch there for the Blazers, a sliding tackle. Another win by Belly, his second. And now Caballero going to come forward, half clear that one off now for Para to deal with. Steps through one defender, then going to get it out now for Weber. Nice play here. Colt Weber steps through a couple of defenders. Gets it now for Martinez. As he'll look to the outside, he's got Scheibel. Caden on his horse there, gets on to it. Now going to take on Riggs, but a heavy touch there from the sophomore. Takes it out of play. So he was trying to drive towards that end line to cycle it into the 18. Is Chase Harris going to come into the game for the Warriors? Nathaniel stole into the – or. And Nathaniel stole into the game for the Blazers. Martinez comes off. Great session there for Martinez here in the opening eight and a half minutes as we're in minute 39 of this 60-minute contest as the Blazers spread it ahead. A little half-header that time by the Blazers as Denise keeps it, protects it, splits a couple of defenders now, continues an aggressive run, tries to touch it outside, but the Blazers do some good defending there. And now into the feet of Elijah Hatch. Nice job by Scheibel just to ride the back shoulder to take it away. Now Harris going to try to get it here. A nice job by Harris and Page as they combine. Now Weber steps through one. He's going to look to go forward, going to look for an option. Tried to get an entry pass there, but Riggs was up to the defending, but only as far as Decker. Now back up ahead, Arnish, and he'll start a run forward. Warriors had a little trouble defending against Arnish thus far, and Parra's going to, Hold him off there with the back hip, and it's another foul and another free kick for the Blazers. Four free kicks earned now by Arnish. Heavy collision there with uh, Roman Para, but looks like Arnish is all right. Just going to set up this free kick. Getting the wind with the Blazers, so could try something again. Now, last time a header came in, Warriors got to be wary of that, and another run coming in. Ball here into the middle and lets it run to Caballero. Good job by Teal. Good communication as Caballero rolls that one out here for Weber. Striding up the uh, near uh, the far sideline. Going to go in play looking for Page, but a heavy touch there. Shavel tried to take it back, but it's into the midfield for the Blazers. And then a bad pass there taken away by Swalstead. Lifts it forward looking for Weber looking for that run, but it wasn't there. 19.35 left to play in this one into the 41st minute now. Warriors 3, Blazers 0, Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. Weber wins a header, but it's going to be another throw in for the Blazers. They'll go quickly, try to get it up the field as Decker tries to hold off the uh, run of the Blazers. Good job by Teal to come over and finish off the defending. Blazers throw in. Drop it off for Bo Schimmick. Well, tackle there by Weber, but it's taken back by the Blazers. Running up the outside now, it's Arnish. Exchanging with his uh, fellow Blazer there, but uh, shepherded out of play that time by Decker. Good defending as Martinez is going to come onto the field. Think he's going to come on for Scheibel. Nope, actually going to come on for Weber. Sorry, third time I'll get it right. Ryan Denise comes off to the sideline to talk with head coach Ron Overcast. Goal kick here by Caballero coming forward. Chance for Harris to bring it down. Great touch there as they'll look to get rid of it again. Trying to go to the outside. Warriors can't get that one as Swalstead going to get it now for Weber. Back for Swalstead. Goes to the outside, going to use the pace now as Swalstead and able to just try to get it ahead for Martinez, but ran out of real estate on that far touchline. 
Throw in now for the Blazers. Comes down for Nathaniel Stoll, but Martinez, good strength there as Weber is going to take it ahead. Nice job by Harris just to seal that off, but they're going to say illegally did so. Is it? Look like the Warriors are the first there, but understand with that shield off is what the referee saw. So Riggs going to send this forward now for the Blazers from midfield. Riggs, left foot onto it, lifts it high into the air as Caballero comes forward. He spilled it the first time and then able to get onto it on his backside there. So Caballero, again, it was an awkward bounce there with the players from the Blazers bearing down on the goal. Caballero sends it up ahead. Gets it for Weber, trying to step past a player. Does good strength there from Weber. Now going to get it out for Scheibel and just missed him a little bit too much on that one from Colt Weber as he couldn't hook up with a sophomore here on the near wing. Changes coming in here with uh, Stoll coming to the sidelines. Ball comes up ahead here for the Blazers, bouncing through a couple of Warriors again. They try another dummy to the Blazers. Couldn't get it to go, though, and then played out across the touch line there by Carter Blevins. So throw in for Cooper Cannon and the Warriors. Long throw in coming down for Page. Good touchdown. Now trying to go back for Scheibel. Unable to complete that one, and then the Blazers play it out that time as the Warriors going to have the throw in. So Cannon going to come forward. He'll have another throw. Let's look to give it for Page, trying to head it on for Harris or Scheibel. Going to come back outside and be another, another throw in. Cannon low on the floor there for Weber. Takes it away from his defender. Splits two and then shielded off of it there by Blevins. Nice touch through here for the Blazers. And then it's going to be taken away by Parra. But they say a little push in the back there. Riggs forward now for the Blazers. Good header win by Teal there at the top of the 18. Arnish onto it for the Blazers. And they call a foul on Weber there. Another chance for Arnish to hit one, but right into the waiting arms of Brian Caballero. Trying for that awkward little bounce there, but Caballero read it nicely, saw it skip right into his hands, and then a ball ahead. Blazers got to deal with it here as Weber is able to step through. He's got a couple of options. One of them's Chase Harris. Harris going to come ahead. Shimmick and Riggs just stepped across to save that chance. Ball up ahead, nice job by Parra just to slow things up, but they're going to look for Arnish, trying to bring it through. Warriors defending just going to do enough here. No intentional back pass, so Caballero can pick that one up. Ball comes out now for Decker. Runs across the right foot and then sent way forward, but way out of play. Ball headed on here for the Blazers. Good touchdown as Teal tries to take it away, and then Parra finishes off the takeaway, but the ball is loose on a header in the middle of the field. Now Swalstead steps through. He'll look to go outside for Martinez. Chance to get on his horse, but it's going to be Riggs to take it away. And going to be a throw in here for the Warriors. Warriors going to have a throw in here now with Decker. 
Thrown up ahead, looking for a Warrior, looking for Harris. Going to go in on goal. Shimmick, another chance here for the Warriors. Can't put it away, though, as the Blazers somehow get out of trouble here as Cooper Cannon's got to come back and do some defending up this near sideline. Ball comes ahead for the Blazers. Trying to get it now for Arnish. A little back heel taken away by Swalstead and cleared up the field now. And now Scheibel's going to try to take it away, but it's striding ahead comes Elijah Hatch. No whistle here as the Warriors going to have a chance to run again. Going to try to get onto it as Harris. As he and Riggs are going to battle. Ball comes into the middle of the field. Good spread of play there for Bartlett. And now Arnish. Has it taken off of his foot here by the Warriors, but right back to the Blazers. Ball to the outside. Nice little play there by Mason Decker. Almost a little scissor kick there to bring it under control as Arnish and Martinez going to battle. Nice job by Fisher. Good strength there. As then as good a kick as Decker had to have is probably worst of the game. Now it's going to be Caballero to scoop that up on a low shot. Another save there for Caballero on a shot. Keeps it clean. 11.53 to go in this one. 49th minute here. Warriors trying to take away the 2024 Pinnacle Cup Championship. Ball touched to the outside here as Scheibel's just going to shoulder off his uh, trailblazer there, which was uh, Elijah Hatch. Change possibly coming in with Corbin Butte. They're going to say it's Blazer ball. Not sure exactly how that's possible. And then a heavy challenge there, but no whistle. I feel like the uh, whistle's coming in soft for the uh, offense and a little uh, maybe not quite as often for the defender there. Could have felt like Parr could have earned a free kick in the defensive half, but the Blazers are going to have a throw in now with Skylar Thomas. Thomas throws it in for Arnish. Turns inside. Trying to free up some space across the top of the 18. Took on a shot. Couldn't get it through. Warriors still defending. Arnish gives it wide. Touch inside here for the Blazers. That was Thomas. Thomas with the throw. Going to try to go long here and par able to chip that one away. Out across the near touch line. 10.45 to go in this one. Long throw here. Teal takes it. Going to send it away for another throw in. Throw for the Blazers here as Para steps in front and tried to chip it back to the inside, but it's going to be taken away by the Blazers momentarily. Riggs, the only one there, sends in a high shot. Going to go through the uprights. It's good for three, but unfortunately only three of the American football style. Arnis just attempting to catch Caballero, maybe out of position there, but... Brian in a good position to easily let that one sail over his goal. Another goal kick coming here with less than 10 to play now as we head here into the final 10 minutes, into the 51st we go. Caballero, ball ahead here. Nice little stab that time by the uh, Blazers as Caballero going to come forward. It's an awkward one. Going to bounce awkwardly, and then a heavy challenge there for the Bla against the Blazers, and it's going to be a corner kick, and... Honestly, that was a dangerous challenge there by Caballero. Should have been definitely a yellow card. It's possible that that challenge could be red. Again, I don't know if the referee just missed it or what happened, but they're going to bring the game to a stoppage here and don't know exactly uh, what's going to go on there as Caballero comes to Give a high five there to Leo Belly. It was a hard challenge, and I don't know if Caballero won any part of the ball, but uh, no card has come out to this point. Thought they had initially said corner. So it is a yellow card on Caballero. And I think they're going to say free kick here out in front of the goal. Is that what they're going to say? I'm 
not sure if Caballero, I don't know if a goalkeeper gets a yellow if you have to go to the uh, sideline, and you do. So the Warriors have to bring in a backup keeper here. So again, uh, Warriors will have to bring in an extra keeper. Karsten McCarry into the game to do the goalkeeping. It's a dangerous free kick yet again for the Blazers. Again, only 9-16 left, but again, the Warriors got to be smart to this one. It's right in the center of the box. You can go low. But put into a tough situation here. Caballero yellow carded. And, again, I think it was the right call. I really do think it was the proper call as uh, Caballero will check in at the next stoppage and Makaria comes into the game and has a job to do with Arnish taking it. And now a quick touch forward, and Makaria not going to be able to deny the Blazers as getting the goal there. I believe that was uh, number s that's seven that we see out there for the Blazers. Anthony Arnish with the goal. So 8.55 to go. The Blazers on the board with Arnish. Again, Carson Vicaria into a really tough, tough position there after uh, after uh, Caballero got yellow carded. So a 52nd minute goal for Arnish and the Blazers. And the Warriors going to take back over here. Owen Page with it, going to try to chip it to the outside for Martinez. And then Page has it again, able to get it for Harris, trying to drop it off for Owen Page again. Can't complete the pass as Riggs lifts it high into the air. Teal wins a good header there. And then back behind Bo Schimmick, so a chance for Martinez to lift it ahead, just off the head of Riggs and some last-second defending by the Blazers as... Ball comes into the middle now, taken down by Elijah Hatch, and the Warriors got a little defending to do here, and Cooper Cannon takes it away and clears it off. Good defending there by Cannon. Now Swalstead for Page, steps through one challenge, but comes to the midfield. Blazers try to recycle it there. Back for Riggs, only here to Martinez. Comes back for Swalstead in the midfield. Then going to try to come to the outside here for Corbin Butte. Completes the pass now. Going to give it for Weber, and good defending the end of it by Nathaniel Stoll. Seven fifteen to go in this one for the Warriors and Blazers. 3-1 Pinnacle Bank scoreboard after the 52nd minute. Anthony Arnish goal, trying to get it up here for Harris. Swung wildly at here by... Riggs and plays it out smartly across the back line for a Warrior corner. Going to be Tyshawn Swalstead to take this one. Warriors stack up on top of the six-yard box here. Cycling players through. A lot of movement. Swalstead rides to it. Sends it in. Backside header there for Teal and just goes wide of the near post. Got a lot on that one. Was able to jump and launch at it. Just couldn't put it on goal. That one inches away from a fourth for the Warriors as Keegan Bush comes onto the field for Chase Harris. What a golden opportunity there for Teal as uh, – Again, just that wide of the near post. There's Riggs coming forward. Bush trying to put on a little bit of pressure here. Ball comes up ahead. Mascaro going to try to take it away from Shimmick, but a good spin away from Trouble. And now Arnish up the outside, going to turn back to the middle, try to launch it forward. Nice job by Parr to rise and take that one away. Good chip forward here from Page for Bush. And then to the outside looking for Corbin Butte. 
But the Blazers take it away, able to get it forward now for Thomas. Going to lift it ahead. Nice job by Decker, but it's going to drop favorably for Anthony Artish. But there is Caballero, easily able to swallow that one up at the 525 mark as we're in the 55th of 60 scheduled minutes here between the Warriors and Blazers. Caballero lifting it high into the now clouding up sky here at Orland High School. Ball thrown ahead here for the Blazers. Awkwardly bouncing. Blazers do bring it under control now. Trying to get it up ahead and do and half cleared there by Para. Now it's going to go outside Arnish on his horse there, but unable to bring it down in play. So Caballero set to send this one away here. Four and a half to go now. Ball forward here for the Warriors. Blazers bring it down. Cannon almost cleared it off. Now it's going to come to the outside. Quick touch for Thomas. Going to take on a high shot there, and he put it in. My goodness. From way outside, now all of a sudden the Blazers have a real chance here with Four minutes remaining in this contest. It is all of a sudden 3-2 to two on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. Not many are going to go in from there, but it just caught the breeze the right way and beat Caballero over the top. He fell to the ground frustrated as Fisher Martinez and Ryan Denise is going to come back into the game for Bush and Butte. So Martinez set to uh, get this one underway here. Warriors got three and a half minutes left in this one as Denise going to go back here for Teal. Teal chipping it ahead, looking for Weber. Able to get it inside for Swalstead. Steps on it, turns to the inside. Now outside for Martinez. Chance to run with it. Tries to get it out for Scheibel. Does. Caden steps it to the inside. Going to look up here. Try to take on a shot. No, left it behind for Swalstead. Couldn't split the defenders. And Scheibel, little chip shot, just goes over the far post of Schimmick. As we go into the final three minutes here. As this one has tightened up late on with... Two goals inside the final uh, 10 minutes. Arnish and then Thomas with a stinger from about 35 or 40 yards out as the ball played out now for a Torrington throw in across the far touchline. Plenty of time left here for the Blazers. Ball comes ahead, cleared off now by Decker, high into the air as Riggs brings it down, touch forward, looking to quickly go to the outside for Arnish, but uh, couldn't complete the pass there as Decker will take the throw in. 2.20 to go. Going to look for Weber out here. Just heads it into the middle. Now it's going to come down here for the Blazers. Up ahead now for Arnish. Back into the middle it goes. Scheibel. This one awkward over the top of Caballero's goal, but it was deflected by the Warriors. So now it's a dangerous corner set piece. Inside the final two minutes here as the Blazers Smelling a little blood in the water here as the Warriors, who were in control for the first 51 minutes of the game. Here comes the corner kick. It's open here. Caballero with a great save. That one, the Blazers had an open header, but Caballero up to the job makes up maybe for the long shot going in there with a minute 35 to go off the right foot of Caballero, launching high into the air. Bounces once. Martinez is there. Weber can run forward, but it's going to go out of play for a Torrington throw-in. 80 seconds remaining in this championship game. 3-2, a good one from start to finish as the Blazers going to have to send everybody and everything forward. Para with a great header win there. Blazers trying to come through the midfield. Now it's to the outside. Weber came back to do some defending and then clears it across this sideline as there it goes inside the final minute. Ball ahead here for the Blazers. Header won by the Warriors. Martinez steps through one defender. Steps through a second. Scheibel can latch on to it. Spreads it into the middle here. Can't complete the pass. Now Scheibel going to try to switch the field now here 
for the Warriors. Unable to do so. Decker doing the defending. And it's going to go out of play off of the Blazers. 35 seconds to go now in this championship match. Blazers header down. Weber has it momentarily. Ball's still loose. And here's a challenge in the midfield. Blazers with it striding forward. Warriors looking for some defending. Nice job there by Denise to take it away. And the Warriors able to spread it wide. 15 seconds to go. Blazers still with a chance here late on. Warriors just trying to do enough. Ball comes back. It's loose in the midfield. Warriors five seconds defending left to do. Ball high into the air. And then a header won by the knees, and that is going to do it. The Warriors going to come out with a Pinnacle Cup victory, not without a few frayed fingernails and a little anxiety late. But the three goals, enough for the Warriors to take out the Blazers. 3-2 on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. Pinnacle Cup champions in 2024. Worland Warriors 3, Torrington Trail Blazers 2. Post-game show comes your way next on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. Supply is known for their industrial hoses, steel products, and trailers, but they'll surprise you with products for every customer. Check out Lazy One Clothing, matching pajamas, and more. Kill Tech jackets for kids and adults, ready to protect you from old man winter. Stay cozy and stylish with Trail Crest Blankets. Stuck? Not a chance with Yankum Kinetic Ropes for every size ride. Give Hasco Industrial Supply a call at 347-6158 or stop in at 415 Bighorn Avenue in Worland. The Warriors Supporter Shield. Join the War Party. Thank you to the following War Party members. Jay's Detail, 1626 U.S. Highway 20, 347-2071. Bryant Honey, Pure Wyoming Honey and Pollination Services. Sage Creek Land and Cattle Company. Bighorn Federal Savings Bank, 1006 Bighorn Avenue, 347-6196. Want to join the War Party? Call 307-431-1468 or email mckamiebroadcasting at gmail.com. Ladies and gentlemen, are your diesel engines letting you down? Need a fix that's top-notch, fast, and reliable? DPS is your go-to destination. We are fueled by excellence and driven by expertise. From trucks to trailers, no job's too tough for our skilled crew. We've got the latest technology to get your diesel roaring again. Choose DPS where you decide and we provide. Stop in at 1051 North 10th Street in Worland. Call us 347-4410 or visit us on the web at dps307.com. Here in Wyoming, we live by the spirit of the Wild West. Now where the sun's a little brighter, where the snows that fall are a trifle wider, where the bonds of home are a wee bit tighter, that's where the West begins. We're the bank that's with you wherever that spirit leads. Because we're more than a bank in Wyoming, we're Wyoming in a bank. Pinnacle Bank, the way banking should be. McGarvin Moberly Construction, a Worland institution, is celebrating 60 years in business. McGarvin Moberly is a specialized construction company with a focus on highway rehabilitation, maintenance, and reconstruction. For as many years as they've been in business, they've supported Worland High School Athletics, and that tradition continues with the support of McKamey Broadcasting. McGarvin Moberly wishes good luck and success to all Worland Warrior and Lady Warrior teams this season. McGarvin Moberly, 60 years and counting. Go Warriors! And welcome back inside the broadcast booth. Jordan McKamey with you. Warriors victorious here in the Pinnacle Cup. 3-2 over the Torrington Trail Blazers in this one. Warriors controlled it for much of the game through about 51, 52 minutes of that contest. But then at the end of it, the Trail Blazers able to put in a goal off a free kick for Arnish. And then it was Skylar Thomas with a once-in-a-lifetime hit from about 40, 45 yards out that beat keeper Brian Caballero. Then Caballero came up with the save of the game on a, free, on a corner kick that was a free header for the Blazers across the uh, just outside the uh, about the PK spot. And Caballero able to react quickly and pick that one up. And the Warriors come away with the victory 3-2 and the hardware. The Warriors will... Uh, take this Pinnacle Cup championship ahead into the season. It's a spring break here for both the uh, both for the uh, classroom and for the uh, soccer season as well as the uh, Warriors will take a break here on spring break and then be back with some conference 
uh, games coming ahead as they'll head out uh, on the road for a couple of games. I believe they'll head to uh, Douglas and then head to Newcastle for games. So uh, those ones coming. Douglas going to be a challenge as well out on the road. That one will challenge the Warriors here uh, in 2024. Didn't talk with the coaches before the game, so not going to try to uh, get a post game going here in uh, in this one. Is uh, just going to let the uh, wars actually head coach, assistant head coach Zach Lemka coming up to have a conversation with us. So we'll uh, stick around here momentarily for that conversation as uh, we'll chat with him about the Warriors' victory here as we let him get on the headset, get himself situated. As, again, Warrior head, uh, assistant head coach Zach Lemke with us. Coach, well, for about 51 minutes, that was pretty comfortable, but the last nine got a little uh, got a little uh, intense, little anxiety there, but you hang on for the victory. Yeah, yeah. Um, boys did so good all game, and then we just got to work on that killer instinct of finishing out a game. They had complete control. We were doing a great job, and then we just started losing it, and you can feel that momentum shift. There's – no tangible thing about momentum, but you you sure can feel it when you're down there, and um, that's just something we got to come back and work on next week and all season, I believe. Hopefully, well, and yeah, and I imagine uh, I imagine Brian Copier probably wants that uh, that one save back from the Skylar Thomas goal. I mean, kind of a, kind of a once in a lifetime hit there. It was on target, but most time you'd say about 99 out of 100 you're going to save that one. But sails into the back of the net, coming off the heels of the Brody Teal missed header on a free header as well. So kind of just that just that anxiety there. But the boys hang on through it, and you feel like that'll serve you moving forward, having to hang on a game like this. Yeah, and I mean to give the Torrington kid credit. That was one heck of a shot. I mean, good for him on connecting with that. And, um, on our side of things, it, it's good to see for our boys that they can grit a game out. They can put forth the effort and trust one another enough to play the whole entire time of the game. But, um, yeah, it's just something we do need to work on just a little bit is like I said earlier that, uh, uh, that killer, killer instinct, instinct yeah. you know, just to get through the rest of the game. But overall, I mean, we're really proud of our boys coming in three day, uh, three games in a row and just finishing it all out. Yeah, Pinnacle Cup champions here. And again, a, of course, great team effort out there. But do a couple of moments, obviously, where that momentum shifted after that, I think it was a 55th minute goal goes in. The uh, Blazers got a corner kick with about two minutes left. And after a save that he wants to make, Caballero comes up with probably the save of the game on that free header. Yeah, yeah. Brian is – he's an amazing athlete. He's an amazing goalie. Um, I Cade Weber was awesome last year. But, man, old Brian's giving Cade a run for his money on the goalie shoes. Uh, he's he's just a great – he's a great kid and a great player. And um, it seems like nothing really shakes him too much. He's comfortable back there in net. Um, no matter if it's a breakaway or uh, a heck of a shot, Brian always seems to get a hand on it and as or at least seems like he is in complete control of every situation. Well, and Coach, uh, again, you get a little bit of a spring break here uh, away from games that I'm sure obviously going to be on the practice field uh, for the uh, games coming ahead. Any final thoughts here on this one, Pinnacle Cup Championship, as the Warriors come away 3-2 victors? I think we're just going to be happy with uh, how we played the last few days and then just tell the boys, you know, it's a it's a good way to start our season, but we can't settle with this. We have to come in and we have to work every day. By no means is anybody at this tournament, especially us, perfect. We need to come in and put the work in on a daily basis, and this should be a good step to our season, but this hopefully is not our peak or even close to it. Assistant head coach of the Worland Warriors, Zach Lemka, joining us here. Coach, we appreciate you taking the time. Go enjoy the victory before you get back into the X's and O's with the head coach in charge, so we appreciate you. Yep, thank you very much. Assistant coach Zach Lemka there as the Warriors come away. 3-2 victors here on a Saturday afternoon at Warriors Stadium. 3-2 on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. Worland Lady Warriors also took the Pinnacle Cup home with a 3-0 victory over the Buffalo Lady Bison, so the Pinnacle Cup is painted in black and orange of Worland High School home hosted tournament home hosted victors spring break coming up next week so no games next week or next weekend then we'll be back with you the week following with road games at douglas and at newcastle high school on a thursday and a saturday we'll have that for you here on the mckamey broadcasting network keep your eye on the facebook page at mckamey broadcasting for those link posts for everything uh Worland warrior and lady warrior sports of course if you're right here on the youtube page and you haven't done so yet please give us a subscribe please give the videos a like and share that link with any 
anybody, family, friends that want to tune in to Warrior and Lady Warrior Sports. That wraps it up for us here from the 2024 Pinnacle Cup. Whirling Lady Warriors, Whirling Warriors, champions, 3-0 and 3-2 on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. Until next time, and there will be a next time, go Whirling Warriors.